Hey guys, uh, welcome to the video. Um, I'm going to be doing a crossover with Brandon here from Texas. If you want to introduce, there you are. Hey. Um, we're going to be talking about like the current state of the comic book industry. You know, are we are we witnessing the death of the comic book industry, the thing that we dreamed about all working in since we were little kids? So, uh, yeah, and. Uh, this is a video version here on my channel, and if uh, you want to listen to this as a podcast, because this is going to be going on for pretty long, uh, Brandon will be posting the audio to his podcast if you want to tell us about that. Yeah, um, check out Apollo City Comics. We're on any, U- I mean, we're on YouTube, we're on any podcast network. So if you guys want to check us out, our Instagram's our biggest thing where I post all the collection and everything. But we have Facebook and Twitter and all that. So you guys could hit us up anywhere and everywhere. Um, if you check out our YouTube, uh, we're part of David Frankenbeans Productions, and there's a bunch of movie reviews and other podcasts you guys could check out there too. But this is going to be everywhere. <laughs> Great, cool. And then we have uh, Brandon from San Francisco. Hello, everybody. This is <laughs> I am the, uh, the the connect the connection between the two, I guess. Yes, you are the bridge. You are the bridge between two worlds. Yes. 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 Podcast except, SF to Texas. Yes, kind of like the monitor, and we're just like different, you know, worlds in the multiverse. Or the uh, the Watcher. There we go. There you go. Well, the watcher. Yeah. <laughs> Some there celestial <laughs> being. Yes, one of them. Um, so there's a lot of insanity going on. Um, I mean, just between the publishers, bet- before all this started, there's talks of 5G with DC Comics. Um Marvel is always just undergoing changes. Um, and I think they were still yeah. kind of adjusting stuff with their new, uh, um, with Kabolski being in charge right now, just because he just started as editor in chief. And uh, now coronavirus has thrown everything out of whack publications, releases, Diamond can't ship stuff. Diamond just announced they're going to ship stuff. So there's a lot of ground to cover here. Um, where do you guys want to start? Um, just you like guys, we could just a break. topic. <laughs> yeah, um, how about we start about it just to let's keep it simple for now. Let's just talk about our comic shops that we go to. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's important support to uh, to everybody. If you can support um, your uh, some of your local comic shops, you know, I think that it's is- important right now that we important more than ever that you don't order from big evil corporation Amazon who is going to come after us now for mentioning that, but (laughs) don't order from them order from the old guy at the comic shop down the street. It might be a little bit more expensive, but trust me. Yeah. I it's better to have those places than to, uh, you know, order from, you know, we all understand the convenience and that it's easy and cheaper, but right now the local comic shops do need everyone as much as possible. How is, uh, you're both in San Francisco, right? Yeah. So I go to Mission Comics and Art. Um, that's over in the Mission District in San Francisco, in between 18th and 19th on Mission. Uh, where do you go, Danny? Um, well, since I don't read comics monthly anymore, and we'll get into that later why I don't. Um, but whenever I do go to like buy graphic novels or, uh, or anything like that, or sometimes action figures, I do usually go to... Uh, Amazing, I think it's called Amazing Fantasy here in the Sunset District of uh, San Francisco. Yeah, yeah and I've always liked that place. Uh, there's a there's so many comic shops in here that I, I still got to check out. And I've been here for two years, and I don't even think I've gotten to half of them. And uh, but where I used to go when I did read comics monthly, um, I would go to a place called Al's Comics, and that is in Stockton, California, and that has been there for ever that is a very very old uh comic shop and he's well known in the community so if you guys are near the stockton area or wherever if you're looking to visit a comic shop please uh try to uh help al out at his uh, comic shop because it's a uh, it's a relic really it, it is yeah and then um i was gonna say about my shop uh i go to like i said i go to mission comics and Art. i've been a customer there since maybe 2009 and I've consistently bought monthly books from there since. Oh, wow, nice. Uh, yeah, un- employed, unemployed, broke, <laughs> overly paid. I've gone there no matter what. Uh, the owner there, you. Leaf, um, I-, I can just say his name, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Leaf Smith, the owner there, he's like the greatest guy ever. You know, every comic shop is unique and has plenty of things to offer. 
But Leaf is one of those guys that he is very humble, really nice. He's really knowledgeable of everything. Like many owners, he's been around for a while, you know, and he is always willing to help people find what they love. He doesn't force you to read anything. He tries to figure you out as a person, gets to know you, just hangs out and talks to you. And, you know, that's how I learned how to suggest series to people was just getting to know them and find out what they're interested in and what, what they're at least intrigued by. And, you know, because of COVID-19, he's had to close down because he's not an essential business, of course. And uh, basically, yeah, he, I'm hoping that he could reopen. And, you know, that's the shop I can go back to. That's like my second home right there. Yeah, definitely. Some of those, right. um, I mean, what I noticed a lot about local shops here is that a lot of them really depend on that new comic book every single week to come out to get their sales. Mm -hmm. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, the place I go to, it's all-star comics and all-star comics and games. Um, and they've been around for like 35 years. Brad is the sole owner of that place. Um, he's literally watched me grow up. I used to go there as a kid. I didn't understand it because he had so many, as a kid, I was like, it's nothing but old stuff. But now that I'm grown up and I know things, I'm like, it's full of golden and silver age and bronze age. And that's what's kept. Wow. Yeah. Um, a lot of places here really depend on just getting their new books, new figures, new statues, and they don't have a lot of older back stock that that's really where the money's at. Um, Brad sells so many golden, silver, CGC, all that type of stuff. Um, and even he collects vintage toys. He goes to toy fairs to get this stuff. Like he has established his store so well that he didn't need to depend on new books to come in every week to survive. Um, He's been around for 35 years and it's no wonder, uh, but he sets up stuff on his eBay store on, you know, he does payments through PayPal and he sells some of these higher end books and, you know, toys and everything. And that's what keeps him afloat, especially during these times. And it's, you know, it's a business model that when I would go there on a weekly basis, I'm like, Oh, it's really cool. I have a cool advantage of getting, you know, rare, hard to find stuff, good deals and certain sets. But now I think it's the smartest business move that he's made. Because because of that, I mean, yeah, all this stuff is going on around us, but he's going to pop back and he's going to be just fine, basically. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, what makes a, a good comic book uh, store owner is, you know, like, like with Al uh, at the one I, I would always go to as a kid is that, you know, he's a man of few words and barely doesn't say much to you and everything, but he remembers you. Mm -hmm. And he always, yeah. he remembers you and he knows what you like. He and, you know, he'll always like, he, you could have never said a word to him, but he never remembers you and he remembers what you purchased. And when you come back in, he'll point you be like, oh, like the new Supermans are in or whatever. And, you know, that's uh, th that that connection really helps build a, a good rapport in the community for uh, comic book stores. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Same, same thing with Leaf, because uh, his store was basically the only store in the mission in the mission district of San Francisco basically like from what I can tell and he what's made his store so nice is that he's welcoming yeah you know when I was a kid I'm not gonna name the comic store but there was a comic store in my neighborhood where the owner was really rude and he was extremely vicious when it came to looking at books in his store you cannot read anything you have to <laughs> determine if you want to buy it by looking at the cover I, I have a couple shops I have two shops here like that's like that as well one of them actually closed down yeah. No wonder. It's so and weird. Leaf has a couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like he has a couch, and you could just hang out, and you could read books, and you know, he's very really good at just letting you enjoy your time there. You know, and I've, I've met plenty of people there that just do the same thing. They just hang out and read comics, and we just talk and laugh and gossip about superhero stuff or whatever. That's cool. Yeah, I That's think I have cool. been to that to that shop that you're talking about in Mission. It's literally on mission. So. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, I have been there. Yeah, I went there not too long ago before uh, the world went to shit. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, with everything going on, you kind of lose all that, right? And I think for him, he hasn't really done any online orders because he doesn't keep a back stock necessarily. Mm -hmm. He orders only for pull lists and what he needs, and then that's it. And if he has some extra, he doesn't really try to hold on to it. He tries to get it out as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. he's kind of he relies on weekly books easily as like his major incomes, pull lists specifically. That's what Brad does too. He uh 
you know, he, what's cool about him, he's kind of realized what his customers want and he just orders a bulk of, you know, Batman's going to sell 50 copies a week for sure. You know, yeah. Justice League's going to sell a certain amount. Same with Spider-Man Venom. So he'll overstock on some of those knowing that they'll sell and everything else. He orders the bare minimum from Diamond. And But if you're missing it and if you want to order it or if you want to start up on the series, you just let him know and he'll call the distributor right then and there and he'll order it for you. So you might get the book a week or two late, but he's not missing out or overspending where I've seen other shops do. Um, I've seen a lot of shops just overspend and get a bunch of everything and then they're stuck with, you know, 50 issues of Supergirl or something, a book that not that many people are reading and it won't move. And then they're trying to sell them off for a dollar a piece months later. But I mean, I love how Brad, if I'm missing a book, if, you know, he sells out of a series too fast, he's just going to order it for me and I'll just get it later anyways. Yeah. Same thing with Leaf. He's willing to like, if he can order it, he'll get it for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I always liked about Al's comics is that, um, you know, his main thing was Marvel and DC, but he always had a a good selection of the, the independent publishers from like mainly Dark Horse and IDW. And like when IDW was like doing Godzilla comics, I ate that up. Like that oh, was, yeah. <laughs> those were some of the best comics I've read in like, ever, like in my, that I, in my, you know, generation of comics, you know, mm-hmm. cause they were just, they were just so fun. And like, they had a good continuity, good stories, great artwork. And, you know, I, I like that. I like that variety that, cause you know, so I like reading, I love reading, superheroes but i also am in the mood for like you know a horror comic like you know the alien comics or predator oh, yeah, yeah oh, yes. terminator stuff like that like those are it's always fun to get to get some variety in and i, I like that uh i always like that about else comics yeah when, once you realize it's an obsession or passion however you want to put it <laughs> a, uh, way you, life. a way of life to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you realize that it's you know, you don't only read superhero books at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that's where the shops come in and help you find what else you love. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, for example, I just finished, I mean, this morning I, I read that finally, um, Empress by Mark Millar. Oh, dude. Awesome story. Awesome oh. series. Yeah. yeah. Great, great ending too. And it was one of those books that, you know, I, my girlfriend went to go pick up my comics because I was at work or something. And then Brad was basically like, hey, give this to Brandon because I know he's going to like it. So I'm ordering it for him. And he doesn't really give me an option, but I grabbed it and I read the first <laughs> issue and I was like, dude, this is awesome. All right, I'll take it. Like, I know you know what I like. Do you guys think that your shops are going to survive past this? When do you expect your shops to open up again? Well, <sighs> it's hard to say because we're a major city and those are getting hit the hardest for, mm-hmm. for like the lockdowns. I mean... Let me let me counter real quick. Uh, how soon is it expected for El Paso to open up again? So here's the crazy part. Uh, gosh, because I, I really disagree with a lot of this, but our governor, uh, Greg Abbott, um, said that El Paso is going to open up, or Texas is going to open up Friday. And oh my we're gonna, God, seriously? Yeah, um, El Paso is opening up, the malls are opening up, um, but they're limiting it to 25% capacity for everywhere um although people will not listen <laughs> no people aren't listening in general right now yeah, and yeah. el paso we're barely going up every day we're getting 30 plus new cases um i just put po- i post on my instagram every day when i see the update i think right now we're at 800 we're about to break 900 tomorrow i am sure we're gonna break 900 because we're at 887 right now and not even yeah. a 50 percent recovery rate so it's gonna spike it's still gonna go up i don't know why yeah. but we live in a re- a red state so it's it's gonna happen you know they want yeah. the money. Um, uh, my uh my boy just moved to texas and he was just like i think this was the wrong time for me to move here <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and i mean well, el paso is getting hit later than everyone else because we're so far west we're nowhere near we're eight hours away from austin dallas san mm-hmm. antonio we're closer to we're closer to california than anything texas honestly um but um so it's barely spiking here. We're going to pick up. I, I'm sure Brad's going to open up, but he's really smart in how he handles his business. And you might just make it by appointment only. Um, like if you want something to give him a call and we'll meet you at the shop or work something out. Yeah. So, and you said he's going to be good either way, right? Yeah. He's, he's been really smart. I mean, the more and more I look at it, he's just such a good businessman. Um, he's more focused on that. He's not into, he's not really into comics and he's not really into the whole everything, but he's there to make money and to have a business. Oh, okay. And at a certain point it was just like, man, that's really weird. You own a comic book shop. But I mean, dude, if it pays for 
you know, your family and everything you have to do. He owns his building. He, he has it set up. Wow. Um, and he has wow. a very loyal customer base. Cause he just, he's a great guy. He treats us really well, you know? Yeah. Um, he knows enough living out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super cheap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not to we, cut yeah, you off, but a I million that helps a lot. A million dollars like here in California will get you like a one, one or two bedroom house, a million dollars in like Texas will get you like 50 acres and a mansion. Yeah, dude, uh, that here would set you up. Um, yeah. It's funny when me and Brandon first met, we were talking about what we pay for our apartments and like who we live with and the space and everything. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't know how, oh, yeah. I don't know how I could do that. Like I have a, I have a pretty spacious spot, you know, for, I have a comic book room and a studio. Yeah, he has a room. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I've seen the videos. He's got <laughs> a room for his comics and his and statue. My rent's less than a thousand a month. You know what I mean? So I have a corner. <laughs> I, I have a one bedroom single unit apartment. It's like an apartment with no neighbors. Uh huh. And it's probably double Texas Brandon's rent. So you live on, you just live with your girlfriend, Brandon? No, I live with my mom actually. Um, okay. My, uh, with everything going on right now, my girlfriend and I have pretty much been the only people we see because we're always, well, we, ugh, we are always around each other. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's like, we're still being social in the sense that we're still like with each other, you know, mm-hmm. we're not like completely confided and, you know, we're like helping each other out with like, you know, housely duties and bills and all that just with everything going on yeah uh i'm in the looks i'm in the i'm in i can't talk right now god i'm basically gonna try to find a place soon after i graduate yeah uh, we're hoping to find something reasonably priced i'll pass it yeah good luck with that i was looking at houses the other day here in san francisco just just anywhere apartments anything and we're looking for like a three bedroom and it was going Probably like five grand, four grand. Yeah. Between like 45 to $10,000 a yeah. month. Oh my gosh. Everything was looking. I yeah. was like, I think I just got priced out of San Francisco. So yep. hopefully, so, hopefully some of the jobs I apply for call me back. Cause otherwise I'm, I'm going to have to hit the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, to get an idea, can you can only imagine what certain establishments establishments pay in fees and rent. And you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Um, so well, that's good to hear, though, that your shop will be, like, well off. And that, you know, yeah. the cost of living out there does help a lot, I imagine. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I mean, he's really valued on building his clientele. And he's, you know, all these years, he's really been valued on that. He's really taken a look at the business. And, you know, he'll send us, like, if I go to San Diego, um, I'll go and pick up a couple things for him. Because he takes care of me, so I'll pick up some stuff for him. And that way he could sell it at the shop. So he always has friends and stuff like that's really come together to help him out because he's just such a good guy, you know? Um, And owning his own building in general, I think that's the key thing. You know, he got real lucky. It's not like in the greatest part. It's it's in the same part of town. I grew up in Northeast, but it's on Dyer Street, which isn't like the greatest, you know, road in the world. (laughs) Um, Dyer. (laughs) Yeah. Dyer. Dyer Street. (laughs) Dyer situation. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it's just a... I mean, once it's one of those buildings, I actually posted a clip of it. You can see the outside of it. Um, he has artists, uh, you know, paint pictures and murals of like different DC characters. Um, and you could see the shop as a full. And he always has that thing packed. It never mm-hmm. looks empty. There's never empty spots on the walls. Um, and I help out there every free comic book day. And I'm basically the guy that sells all the graphic novels because I know how to sell stuff for one. Um, and I know what to recommend. And that's like the biggest part of his uh, profit. It's because you get so much money off those graphics. So it's cool. I'm glad you guys realize that too. Um, by mentioning it's better to get from them than anywhere else. Um, right. As great as in stock trades is and uh, Amazon um, for getting them all half off, but getting it from your shop right now is just so important. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Did you want to talk about your shop, Danny or mine or. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll just say that. Um, yeah, I don't go to Al's comics very often anymore because I, I don't live in that area anymore and I'm, I'm barely ever there. But um, I don't I don't know what the future is going to bode for him. I know that he's he's older. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer he's planning on doing this. But like I said, he's a big figure in the community. And I, I hope that the community comes together and tries to, to help him out. Um, all I can do at, at this point is just you know try to promote him a little bit. So I hope that he survives and survives all this and cause I, I would love to 
still be able to go there once in a while. Yeah, well, I hope I some of these places, like, you know, I mean, I just saw Forbidden Planet in New York City posted it up, but they started a GoFundMe just to keep their shop oh, alive. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I wow. went there this past January when oh, I was nice. out there. Yeah. Uh, they're bustling. And the fact that they had a GoFundMe going, that's, that's something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, and this kind of segues into what we we're going to talk about next is that, well, distribution, you know, Diamond closed down, which was rough, but DC is going through Midtown Comics in New York City. What do you guys think about that? <sighs> corporate be corporate. <laughs> yeah. There's I mean, a... Go ahead, Brandon. Oh, oh, no. You can go ahead. You, you started oh. first. Well, uh, um, I don't know if you guys like... Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Comic Tropes on YouTube. The, yeah. The YouTube, YouTube channel on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he did, a, he did a really good video that was talking about how how the distributors are kind of killing the comic book industry now, even though like they were the ones who saved them and then now they're, they're killing it. And I, I think this is just one of the, the examples how they're, they're not, that they're doesn't seem like they're playing ball. Yeah. I mean, diamond, you know, I'm never here to shame anything entity, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'll keep that to personal conversation, uh-huh. but you know, they were never, like, in my experience of working in an actual comic shop, because I used to help Leaf out and actually work for them, mm-hmm. uh, they were always crappy about just delivery, you know. Oh, yeah. They would damage books. You know, they would mess up orders. Uh, sometimes you couldn't order certain things, and for whatever reason on their end, they just wouldn't clarify why. It was like books bare bones. Late, stuff like that. Yeah, that bare bones delivery service, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, missing Wednesdays when books come out. Um, so I've been like in San Diego. I, uh, since I kind of, I'll get a badge from Brad sometimes because I work at the shop, you know, mm-hmm. so I'll get the retailer badge and I re- attend the retailer summits that they have. Um, and the main thing I see them address every single retailer summit I go to, um, is, Hey guys, we're working on packaging. Hey guys, we're doing this. We're going to double box stuff. We're adding this enforcement to make sure your boxes don't get ruined. And more and more often, it's just, it's, it's a never ending cycle. It's something that they've never perfected. And, you know, at one thing I can understand because they're the only distributor, uh, distributor for comic books. And it's like, yeah. yeah. And it's, it tripped me out because it's, how do you host, you know, Titan comics? How do you host image comics and Marvel, DC, IDW, uh, dark horse? How do you host all this and be the only ones? I don't yeah. get why another yeah. company hasn't risen up by now to be like, Hey, look at all this stuff there. I can't remember the name of him, but he, there was a comic book shop that started their own distribution chain, but these major companies never jumped on board. It was really just small, small indie companies. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that's one of the things too, is that comic books are printed on the, the cheapest paper possible. It's like, I think it's one step above newspaper paper. Yeah. It's basically yeah, so- glossy, uh, Plus one tier newspaper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is, uh, which is even more sad that they, like they cheap it out. It's the cheapest paper. They still can't break even on their sales. You know, yeah. uh, speaking of like for Marvel and DC, not, not, uh, the, the independent guys, but you know, that's also a thing too. It's just, that's economics one one when you have a monopoly and you have, there's nobody to compete with you. So why, what, what's going to force you to do better? I think cause they know oh, they're the point. only ones that mm. distribute. Yeah. So they yeah. set the parameters. Mm-hmm. That'd be, yeah, that'd be the word. Exactly, the yeah. Because, you know, it's like you hold this conglomerate of a certain niche service, right? You know, comics aren't selling like hotcakes like they were in the golden or even the silver age, you know, mm-hmm. or even like the 80s and 90s sometimes. It's just, it's a specific market that is big enough for it to exist, but not big enough to make it proficient. Because exactly. they know mm-hmm. readers are not, I'm not going to say desperate, but that's kind of the word I'm going for. They're like thirsty for content. You know, com- consistent readers want the, these books out. They want these books to be available. And they're just like, well, we're the only ones that do it. So we're just going to ship it at the cheapest cost, of, you know, as yeah. cheap as possible. And that gets the job done. No one's complained yet, even though they are. Yeah. No one's like striked out and hasn't bought books. You know what I mean? Yeah. But th- that's like what happened with the, with Toys R Us, it was just like, you know, not to go off on a tangent here, but like they, uh, just to try to put it into perspective for any of our listeners in another way, but like they were, uh, 
they didn't have any competition. They charged people whatever they wanted, which was overpriced. They didn't carry very good pro. They didn't carry a good variety of products because it was like, well, who else are you going to go to? There's nobody else. And then Amazon, eBay, and all these other things take off, and they, they had no answers for it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean it's that's. Just- yeah, the the comic industry needs to make a certain amount of money to make other parties interested. But exactly. Let's be honest here. At this point, the industry exists just for the sake of existing because they've existed for eighty plus years at this point. So, yeah. you know, it's just out for the sake of making people happy, not really a profit. Even though they wanted to make a profit, that's how I yeah. see it. Mm-hmm. And I still believe that they can, but it's uh, it has to be smart. You know. Yeah. I, my comic shop, my comic shop owner has said one thing, you know, or I shouldn't say just him, but tons of people really, you know, a number one issue sells. Yes. Getting a issue 14 to sell. Yeah. 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 You know, like almost everyone universally agrees with that. Like that's the one thing they struggle with all publishers. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with the doomsday clock. You know, when doomsday clock was announced, I was That's ecstatic. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, like, I, I, would, I went to, I tried to go to a comic shop the night that it had a midnight release and the line was around the corner. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I bought yeah. two issues. I bought, yeah. I bought, yeah. Oh, yeah. I bought a particular I, and a regular cover. Yeah. 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 I but then they decided to take, like, five years to get to finish it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know? Jeff Johns, we get it. You're, like, top tier writer at DC, but do you really need to take, like, eight like, months to finish 12 issues? Like, we know this you can was, pump it out. This was it. Like you had everybody interested and you blew it. And, you know, yeah. that's uh, the biggest issue I've seen with comic books right now is that they don't stock up on a series and then put it out. They're okay. Issue one's done. Let's kick it out. Let's get it going. Oh yeah. Issue two is you got to keep up and everything. Yeah. Um, what I really think that they needed to do and, you know, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but this is just off the top of my head, but every you know, once a year, they need to take like a month break from releasing new stuff so that they could catch up on their own end. Yeah. You know, release graphics, release, you know, back issues, some, something, you know, they have those Walmart books. Empty out the warehouse or something. Yeah. It's, and give these creators time to catch up on stuff because you know what? I don't pick up a lot of Marvel books. Um, I have not, I don't think I've seen any good Marvel creators aside from Jason Aaron and Donny Cates. Besides that, I'm not interested in a lot of Marvel books because a lot of the stuff, the content they put out wasn't that great. And I don't want to buy six different tie-ins at four or five bucks a pop when I could get a DC book or an image book for a buck or two less and not exactly. need exactly. tie-ins. Yeah. And, it, and no, it's, it's weird because this kind of has like built up to like the demise of the industry, right? Exactly. It's like they were their own worst enemy. They had no emergency plan. They had no strategic way of going about business. And now with everything closing down and everything halting, everyone's like scrambling and freaking out. Yeah. Cause yeah. they didn't, they weren't prepared for, they were, they were barely hanging on by a thread, but like the, the coronavirus could be like the nail in the coffin. And yeah. I think if, if you guys are cool, I think we could go on to the, to the next thing of like the two biggest things that are, that are about, I think are about to kill the big two right now are, the uh the two new those those new marvel heroes that they just announced and uh dan didio stepping down from dc with the 5g thing if you guys are ready to talk about that all right uh, which marvel uh, heroes i wasn't i may not be aware. so they, it's been like skimmed over i yeah. know this because to, i couldn't find much I, I they're not they okay the they light <laughs> Let me see if I can do uh, screen sharing on this. <laughs> I will show you the like to dislike ratio on YouTube. So hold on. Yeah, I remember reading about that and everyone was not happy. Hold on, let me bring it up first and then I'll. I'm curious. I haven't. Because, um, I mean, what, what news sources do you guys check out while you pull that up? Do you guys. I like, uh... kind of. I get like a pool of different websites that contribute. So I have a a Google app on my phone that gives me like news updates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have like politics and tech and entertainment, whatever, you know, the stuff I like. And then um, I have like updates from comic book stuff. And I usually get like news or drama, comic book resources. Uh, There's a couple other ones. There's one that like sends out. Oh, there it is. Look (laughs) at that dislike bar. 
That is, that's why we have not seen any more advertisements from this. It, they, they put it out and that was it. 17th. Wow. I, yeah. Okay. And, you know, I'm someone um, that checks CBR and bleeding cool, like 10 times a day. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, 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 don't try, I don't trust, C, I don't trust CBR. I never really, I think I never really like the way that they report. And I, also I can their, their mobile, yeah. their, their mobile navigation is trash. Not to, you know, yeah. I've talked I think, about this with my friends. I think I go to them because I went to comicbook.com for so long. And when comicbook.com yeah. changed their format and it was just, you couldn't click on their thing without an ad popping oh, up. Oh, yeah. Or, no, 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 no. I think, I think I am talking about comic. I think it's comicbook.com. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Because like, I think that they just, they put forth like the most clickbaity titles. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. I'm just like, yeah, it's such a waste of time. CBR um, has a, I mean, their content's all right, but it keeps updating. Um, Bleeding Cool is the worst. Like, I can't stand Bleeding Cool's website for the life of me. I hate opening it up on mobile, on desktop, on yeah. everything. But yeah. they have stuff about the industry that nobody else has. Yeah. IGN's pretty, is okay, but it's yeah. not like in depth. No, it's pretty much. I don't like their reviews. Not to cut exactly. you off, sorry. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. IGN can. doesn't, they're, they're known for re- bad reviews across the board, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Or, wait, I think Brandon's got a lag. Right, okay, no, he's back. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, no, I, I usually look at their reviews for reference, but after a while, I was like, yeah, I can't trust these 100%. Uh, yeah. Especially on Call of Duty, that's a different story. Call, but, of, um, Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, I don't even play the games really. But uh, yeah, the the whole Marvel launch. I remember reading about it. So there's two things I felt like that came to mind when all that was floating around the internet. One was that people were basically like, "Oh, Marvel is capitalizing on the SJW kind of scene right now," or whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah. know. The you know? It, I think more it's woke culture. <laughs> I, I I don't yeah, know. I don't. I whatever you want to call it. I don't know what everyone wants to call it but basically there's that how they're trying to capitalize on what's the hot thing going on with youth and yeah. when i say youth i mean anywhere from like nine to like 40 yeah yeah <laughs> oh, God. And, uh, um and i think back to that interview or press release where they're saying they said i forgot who but they said diversity doesn't sell what or, i could be paraphrasing wrong but there was something that someone from Marvel said diversity doesn't sell or they tried a hand at like diversifying their heroes and it wasn't working or something like that. Oh my. Well, they had so much backlash for what was her name? Rary Williams and, you know, Miles Morales and um, Hulk um, as what's his face when they changed their whole cast a few years ago. Um, and that backlash was so huge because, and I understand, I mean, you don't, there's a difference between like a reboot uh, and a revamp. And there's also a difference between just like not doing anything at all. The, yeah. Instead of making a new, um, instead of being creative and making a new character, they're just putting someone else in the costume and yeah. Yeah. I, it doesn't flow as well as Batman beyond all the time. I think Batman Beyond's like the one exception where they put someone new in the costume and it works. Well, I think there's a few things that kind of make it a little muddled. That's kind of like it, depends on how the person perceives it that makes it a little hard to like i guess judge or talk about <laughs> but like i think it's safe to say the most successful new hero of our lifetime or generation however you want to put it and this is me just kind of like throwing it out there not like heavy research or anything i would say miles morales oh for sure and yes down. that's the first yeah. thing that popped in my head of course and, and see the reason why i think Miles Morales, I I don't ever remember there actually being any backlash to Miles Morales because they did it right. They made yeah. him his own character. Oh, there was yeah. just <laughs> the uh, thing is, you, you still have like old white guys making these like diverse characters, and that yeah. kind of doesn't sit well with a lot of people, you know? Yeah, but because you know, I, well, I, say, like oh. <laughs> just go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say like Bendis made made Miles Morales, and everyone loved it. Yeah, and then he made Rory Williams, and everyone's like, "What's going on?" <laughs> yeah, and then you have another section of people who are like, "Well, why is like Bendis creating these kind of characters?" You know? Yeah, well, there was a rumor going out when he came out that uh, Michelle Obama told them to do it, and that that's why we got an African American Spider Man, hmm. and that was a huge uh, backlash, which wasn't I true. Heard a different rumor. <laughs> Some yeah, it was like it's something about Michelle Obama telling Bendis or Marvel to make this character. And huh. um, some announcer said it, and 
you know, Ben just spoke, he he got to meet Michelle Obama and that was it. That was like the most of that. And so people, and it just happened to be around the same time when they were announcing this stuff. So a bunch of backlash came from that. Um, and of course it is the old, you know, white male that is going to give backlash against an African-American Spider-Man as well. Yeah. But, I mean, oh, go ahead, Danny, keep talking. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think the reason why Miles Morales took off though, and, and Jane and Jane Foster as Thor. I remember that being pretty well received, and like why that worked. But like Amadeus Cho as the Hulk, and and mm-hmm. I, they did another switch with Iron Man too. Is that like yeah, very with well. Miles, that was, uh, Doctor Doom? Yeah, yeah. But with Miles Morales, like for example, they they didn't shit on Peter Parker. No, and no, say not like at all. this is the new and improved Spider Man, and look how diverse he is and everything. They gave the ultimate Spider-Man a, a nice like farewell. And then when they merged two universes, miles kind of became, I would say like a protege to to Peter Parker and then went off and became his own thing. Like Mm -hmm. the into the fight, the spider verse movie. And I like that about it. And I think a lot of other people did. And that's why his series was good, but not. And then when you compare that to like Amadeus Cho, which just kind of, you know, trash is a hulk and then yeah. you know so like this is the new totally awesome hulk it's yeah i didn't, I didn't get that, that i could agree oh there was a rumor uh along with the michelle obama thing that they were going to make miles gay too he was going to be african-american and he was going to be a gay spider-man <laughs> and that set people off that really? was like yeah yeah that was like some of the biggest stuff that i was seeing around that time and i've heard ben just talk about it how like he was like guys it I, no one ever said this, but if that's the path the character takes, it's the path the character takes. But people were making up stuff and just trying to push against the change instead of being like, hey, what could happen? Um, and the thing with Amadeus Cho and Riri Williams is that I think they were doing it all too much, too fast, and it felt forced instead of natural. In your exactly. face, too. So yeah, it was, it was like in your Marvel face. now, and like yeah. we're all new, all different. Whatever. And they were doing a reboot with all the Marvel. Everyone got number ones again. But it was like what you were saying right now, Danny, about um, Miles. They did it with a purpose. There was a storyline. They said farewell to Peter, which was well-deserved, I felt. And then they introduced Miles and gave him his own purpose. So mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest difference between Miles and any of these other characters. Exactly. And, you know... uh I think that that's one of the biggest things that's 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 killing comics right now is that is the politics is not not so much from DC but from Marvel especially yeah. since Disney took over and oh, you yeah. know you're you're not like I get it that first off kids aren't reading comics it's mostly young oh, adults and, and sure. teenagers and and it's not that kids aren't reading comics they're reading anime or they're reading, uh, yeah. or not anime, uh, manga. They're mm-hmm. reading manga, or they're reading the independent comics. But they're not really going to Marvel and, and DC, and you know, well, they can't afford them either. <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But when I was um, three ninety nine every month, it was kind of steep, you know. <laughs> yeah, geez, I remember when I first started, they were still like a dollar something. I was like, oh, this ain't that bad. But now it's ridiculous. But you know what? I, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, uh. Yeah, I get that you want to tell kids that racism is bad and everything. And, you know, look, everybody can be different and all that. But a story about with Captain America and Black Panther showing them working together and saving the world does more to teach kids that racism's bad, you know, look at like and set a good example for them than any story wagging their finger in your face saying, you know, and just shoving it all in your face saying, no, like, you know, this is the way it should be and everything. And that's that was the beauty of those old comics written by Jack Kirby and 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 Stanley and Steve Ditko in the early Marvel days. They were so good about incorporating those kind of things into comics. Yeah, there's well, a difference it was kind of like oh, a man. product of. You know, uh, I was gonna say it's just a product of like that time period. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's the biggest difference between like you know, instead of revamping all this stuff and forcing all this and changing the status quo when you don't need to just tell a good story. How about that? Just tell a good story. Yeah, I agree. And the thing that people are scared about that, you know, everything's not selling and people are like freaking out when they're going to open is Marvel's trying to launch this like new quote unquote woke you know, community of heroes. Worst timing ever. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. couldn't yeah. ask for worse timing. Yeah. And then, 
you know, again, I, I sent you the link. I sent you guys the link about the whole uh, diversity thing of like how like people kind of know Marvel for doing that and capitalizing that. That's what mm-hmm. I was trying to get at is that mm-hmm. they're known for being that company that's like, oh, what's that? You know, young, diverse children are what's hot right now. Well, let's shove it in their faces, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just a big thing with the Disney thing, like you're saying, too. And, you know, honestly, and I, I might go on a tangent and stray off a bit, but that's what upset me the most about, you know, they just put half of the editorial team of Marvel. They just furloughed half their employees. Um, and yeah. it's like, guys, you guys are a part of Disney. Like, I don't see this from DC, who's taking care of their creators, who's part of Warner Brothers, you know? Yeah. Um, they're still well, making stuff, pushing stuff out. The first thing that that... Disney does when they take over a company, I was reading about this, that they did this when they took over Fox was they lay everybody off and double the workload to with cut costs. And this too. is Disney. You could buy like the planet with the amount of money you got flowing through you. And you can't, you know, you can't take care of, you can't have, a, you can't hire a good staff to create a good quality book. Yeah. Like, and take care of them it's ridiculous yeah i mean it's like anything else it's all about making money and as much as possible right yeah and they don't they don't need money like i said like they now don't. they might actually yeah. okay well yeah now they would but like, <laughs> yeah and but, i think uh, this i think all leads into another thing too is just the writing uh, at the big two has just gone downhill yeah, so, yeah. i think like it's it's a weird time right now for obvious reasons right and, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, your comic shop, comic shop's already struggling. Like, let's be honest. Nobody's like mm-hmm. flowing in money that's selling books. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They yeah. probably barely break even. Yeah. If they are making money, it's enough to like live normal lives, mm-hmm. normal. Air quotes. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine, you know, you're getting by the skin of your teeth, you know, people are pulling through, they're helping you stay around and supporting you, giving you money, whatever. And then you know, comic shops open again in like August and we're greeted with the woke Marvel characters, you know? <laughs> yeah. What kid, what kid wants to read that? Yeah. Like, and it, it just, it blows my mind that an editor looked at these two characters named Snowflake and Safe Space. <laughs> oh, and man, I did not thought, know the names. Yeah, that, those are the names. Oh, seriously? Yes, Snowflake oh, and Safe Space. Who <laughs> looked at that and was like, yeah, no, they're, 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 they're kids, they love, they love that. <laughs> you know what, Sean? I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just like, hey, just, hey, while you're at it, let's just go and just step on, you know, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee's legacy. Like, you know? Here's the thing, like you can make stories, like you said earlier, you can make stories that address issues in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to throw random examples out there, like off the top of my head. Like you want to talk about how people, you know, you want to tell a superhero story that's about maybe your ethnicity or even your, how you identify in your gender or how you identify, you know, in terms of gender or background class whatever you could do all that you don't yeah. need to like 100%. that's totally fine too of course and like if anything it's encouraged to have the diversity in those characters and to have characters that help relate to people who you know identify the same way but you don't need to like shove it down our throats is that i feel like yeah I exactly there. i think that's why people that's why the new star wars movies are, are getting so many people mad is they don't want to be pandered to no no <laughs> yeah i totally I mean, agree with that jeez pandering is like the worst thing you could do to your audience and mm-hmm. they yeah. will eventually and, leave and then the thing is the people you're trying to get to read like you know safe space or woke superhero or whatever they're called or what was it snowflake <laughs> snowflake and <Yeah>. safe space <laughs> Okay. And, well, like, you gotta watch the video the guy that's talking about it is just so proud of his creation i'm like no you should be like <laughs> dr frankenstein looking at what you created in horror like so, oh like, my <laughs> god what have i done i just tanked marvel <laughs> comics so like it's like you know it's kind of like owning the word right because you know people don't like being called snowflakes yeah yeah and it's like trying to take ownership of the word but like to me it's just too on the nose and just like Someone who may have been made fun of and been called a snowflake, they might honestly be offended, if anything. Yeah. And you know how everybody gets offended over everything now? 
Well, oh, that, and it's like, I, you get picked on enough on like reading comic books in general, you know? And then if someone yeah, asks like, what you're reading, oh, S- Snowflake. It's like, dude, <laughs> like, so I'm bad. not, so you're not helping us. And the so Batman's hard yeah. enough sometimes. More than ever, comic books are, are, are main, superheroes are mainstream now. And it's great. I love that it's mainstream. You're not helping by creating characters yeah. like this. Though. Yeah. Can, can you imagine being like, I don't know. Let's just throw a scenario out there. You're like nine. You're like 11 years old. You're starting sixth grade. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe you get made fun of for whatever, or you realize something early on, like, like anything, you know, and then you get caught reading a book. I mean, the character could be called snowflake. The book can be called snowflake, but I don't know if that's like the best play, best way to go about it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to put it without sounding like, like you can do this, you just got to do it right. But yeah, yeah. A, a really good story, and everybody was saying that was like one of the best comic books of like the, you know, the, in, in, in modern history. It was uh, the Blue Beetle run in DC, where they re, they rebooted Blue Beetle with Jaime. Okay. Yes, from El Paso, you know, Texas. Yes, oh. you know, and everybody <laughs> was saying like that was a, you know they you know first off for as diverse as all the companies want to be. We're all the Latino superheroes. We're all the Asian Thank superheroes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Please, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not- always it's like, oh, we got a bunch of like it's just white people and black people. We're diverse. It's like, no, you're not. No, no. And, and then like- honestly, Jaime Reyes, the neighborhood that they drew him in, that is not regular El Paso. I would tell you that <laughs> West Side Willows, El Paso. That's the rich end that none of us yeah. is, like know anything about. Give us, yeah. put them in the lower valley or the east side. Or but everybody did, did praise that though because they said that like you know his culture actually played a part in developing him as a character. Yeah, in that, it's just, in that series. All I'm it is, I'm, I'm, I, I haven't read it myself. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I read the first two issues of it. Mm-hmm. You just have to have a natural progression of your character, and I think anyone can write them. It's just respect the medium you're writing about, or exactly, culture, and do well, your research. At the very least, yeah. a good example would be I feel is Duke, the character that Scott Snyder created, and he became oh, yeah, a signal. Yeah. I thought that was a good fluid thing. You know, we have a we have an African American, kind of a Robin, kind of a Batman character. Um, didn't feel forced. He had his own background, just like Miles had his own storyline, had his own background. He's his own, you know, person in the comics, and it's just it's not forced. I didn't feel like Duke was like oh, well, we're doing this to be diverse and to introduce someone else besides Batwing that's African-American. It's like, no, he's a character and he was part of the continuity and it made sense to put him there. Um, yeah. Right. And also with, and, you know, Marvel, you don't replace Captain America with, it was, I don't even know who replaced Captain America. It was some teenage girl. You replaced by like three people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you, just make you someone have- new. And make it make sense. Don't yeah. make it new and be like, oh, we're doing this for this purpose. M- make it purposeful yeah. to the stories. Yeah. And yeah, Captain America passing on his mantle, though, like to like Falcon, like that's like poetry. I mean, yeah. I'm just like, who else would? Or Bucky it, it, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be one of those two. <laughs> there, was a, there was a meme that came out when uh, Endgame came out and they were saying that uh, the only people, they said the only people that are going to be mad about uh, Falcon getting the shield and not and not Bucky. And it showed like, uh, you know, those, like the people that argue on Facebook about politics, like it's always a picture of them driving their truck with like the, uh, the sports oh, yeah. shades on. Yeah, it was yeah. just like a whole like collage of all these like profile pictures. They all look the same, you know, from all these different people So the only people that are going to be mad about that. Yeah. And it makes sense. And didn't he get it, the shield before Bucky in the comics anyways? I think Bucky was first. Or was it Bucky, Bucky was first. first. Oh, oh okay. Bucky was first. Yeah. But at, he, he, sorry, I was I was like whipping out some knowledge. I think was the Civil War after he Yeah, it was at the end of Civil War when Cap yeah. spoiler alert gets assassinated in the, the comic. <laughs> yeah. The comic came out fifteen years ago. Watch out everybody. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's there's, there's gonna be somebody in the comments who's just like, Wow, way to go. <laughs> um, um I will say, you know, um kind of backtracking a little bit here to comic book shops and everything and Marvel in general. Um they're their creators are, I'm, I'm ashamed of how Marvel's treating everyone and their, you know, their team and everything. But Donnie Cates, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but he's uh, from, he lives in Austin, Texas, and he's worked at comic book shops. He's done a lot. And he actually paid off everyone's pull list for the entire city of Austin, Texas. I've um, heard about that. And wow. he, he called out everyone on Twitter. He said, 
wouldn't it be great if the celebrities um, that are in these films would actually contribute and help out the comic book shops because the create or and help out the creators as well because we created these people and you guys are rich because of our yeah. creations and people tried to tear him a point. new one on twitter but he just kept trolling them basically yeah and it, yeah, it got, donnie's holy percent right like i he respect got, him so got, much like, yeah. and it's twitter you see more you know alt-right people on twitter than anywhere else yeah i think i think it's more facebook that has all the alt-right people I don't even know anymore. I don't have Facebook. <laughs> I don't. Facebook, no, Facebook's way worse. I think because Twitter bans all the the, the right wing people, which isn't right either. You know, you shouldn't be banning people for their political. I think beliefs, but Facebook might be worse because you have everybody sixty and up who's on there as well. <laughs> it's all the boomers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now Facebook's yeah. a cesspool. That's why I don't. I just use it to like share my personal stuff on my page, and that's it. And, like I don't even go on Twitter that. I love Instagram though because I follow all comic book artists. Yeah, yeah, that's what's cool about it, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I don't know. Like, it's weird right now because it seems like Marvel does have like they seem to have this idea in mind of trying to be relevant. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it, they're really trying so hard to be relevant. And I think the problem is everyone in that office is like thirty five and up. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they're you not know, good at their jobs. <laughs> and, you know, they probably have someone who surfs social media. I'm not saying this is, like, confirmed or anything, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone's job who's just out there seeing what's trending, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, hashtags maybe. and what people are searching and, like, what sells and what sells in movies even. Because uh, there's even movies that follow that trope of the whole, like, woke yeah. kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and look what happens when they actually just – put some effort into a story. There's no politics, no, none of that. And they actually just write a fun story. It becomes a success. And I'm talking about immortal Hulk. <laughs> oh, dude. and cos and, and cosmic ghost rider, uh, venom cosmic right now ghost with Donny Cates. Uh, yeah. And then anything, and venom Chip too. Zdarsky. I mean, hmm. a life story by Chip Zdarsky was amazing. Hmm. And what fixed the venom thing is that they, they brought it's classic venom. They just brought it oh. back to normal with yeah. Eddie Brock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, that episode. Well, this is airing the week after. So the episode that just aired last week, uh, me and Brandon just talked about that Venom run. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. um, we agreed it's probably like Donny Cates at his best in terms of superhero stuff, mm-hmm. or as I say, capes. You know, which means major publishers, and it's just a fun series that, in a way, goes back to basics, but really flips things on its head multiple times. Yeah. It just goes with it. You know? And something that I really like too is that I Venom is one of those characters that you know I think he's he's like my favorite supervillain, but they always draw him so ugly in the newer comics. <laughs> it's so hideous, yeah. like the way like he looked cool. Like that's a Todd McFarlane, just an excellent design with the the grin and the, and everything, and like you know he's like this giant rip guy and all that, and then. Yeah, but the new comics, like, they make them, like, look this, like, the teeth are coming out everywhere and, like, the huge oh, tongue. It's just yeah, overdone and it's just, yeah, it, it doesn't look cool to look at. It's just a mess. And I'm glad that, like, when they did that cover for Venom, when Eddie Brock first came back as a symbiote, when he just says, we're back, and it just oh, looked yeah. like classic Venom, I was like, perfect. Yeah. I was so, I grabbed that book right off the shelf. Um, yeah. And I mean, kind of to change gears a little bit, but, you know, looking at the stuff that Marvel's putting out, I haven't been happy with it, you know, for a very mm-hmm. long time. And the price point as well. And we'll talk about price points later. But uh, in comparison to DC, how do you think the writing and the storytelling has been there? It's, I think it's since, uh, since Rebirth, it's been a lot more on track. Yeah. Uh, I think we could all agree that Rebirth was the right move. Yes. When it's good, it's really good. Yeah. But when yeah. it's bad, it's just bad. kind of meh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, meh is better than trash. Uh, trash, you trash. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I think right now, the thing is, they have a few, like, secret weapons, like, hidden away. Mm-hmm. You know, DC's got, you know, Tom Taylor, Tom King, Mitch Gerards, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clay I was Man. Earlier, uh, Clay Man, uh, Joel Jones, um... Lee Weeks, probably Lee one Weeks. of the greatest Batman mm-hmm. artists I've seen, period. And they have Bendis right now. Bendis, I mean, Bendis is a hit or miss on a lot of stuff. I'm not going to lie. Like, Superman was cool when it started. 
You see, I, the thing with Bendis is that what they did with Superman was like showed that really, I think it kind of exposed what's wrong with the whole comic book industry in general. And they, this is something that they've been having a problem with for years, but just you gotta, you gotta update these characters. Yeah. You, everyone like he, and not all the time, but like, you know, every three to five years, just do something new with them and giving Superman a son and a family on the farm and everything. That was the best thing you could have done for uh, Superman. A Massey um, Gleason run. Yeah. That yeah. was the greatest thing to ever happen to Superman. And it got people reading like they were booming. They had, yeah. it. they had it. They had everybody back on reading DC and then Bendis came along and was like, well, I'm going to get rid of, you know, John Kent, Jonathan Kent and make him older and everything. And uh, see, I know, fell off at that point. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I was, I, uh, like, I was buying comics monthly at that point. I, re- I read his man of steel, like intro series. And it was just kind of like, didn't take it so serious. Yeah. I wasn't mm-hmm. a big fan of that part. And I was like, okay, I'm curious to see what he does. Cause you know, I'm always like, when you start something, I'm like, I'm not going to hate it immediately. I'm just going to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was digging the Adam Hughes issue. The art was awesome in that one. And, you know, the I forget the villain, but I was like, this guy seems like a threat. Okay, I'm kind of digging it. And I don't know why he, I agree. I don't know why he got rid of Jonathan Kent and like Lois Lane. I'm like, that wasn't necessary, but mm-hmm. sure. So stupid. And I was okay with it. And I was like, okay, I'm curious. Because it had me intrigued. He kind of was doing his own thing. And I'm like, right, I want to see. And then action comics and all that happened, and I was like, okay, I fell off. Yeah. And well, I like the Leviathan stuff he brought in because I really liked that. Like six issue miniseries was just kind of cool. I enjoyed it. Um, but I mean, do you think about? I mean, Grant Morrison on Green Lantern. That's probably the best Green Lantern we've had in years. I don't know yeah. what's game comparable. Like what's comparable to that? Um, I- they're not afraid I- to like. They're not pulling their punches at DC right now. You know what I mean? No. They're actually taking no. risks. And doing stuff, which is something Marvel isn't doing. Um, yeah, it's killing it's Alfred. Like, it's kind of like back in the day, like Marvel was big because they made these relatable superheroes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, both them. And DC was like, well, we don't care. You know, the Flash is going to run the space or whatever. They're you know? more like the stoic kind of, you know. Yeah, and you had heroes. two different ends of the spectrum for superheroes, which was what made it work. You know, yeah, variety. Yeah, exactly. The thing is now, it's like. DC seems to be relying on the same like five people and I'm exaggerating with that number, but it feels like the same five people are the only ones doing stuff. Scott and Marvel Snyder, was just Tom like, King. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a slew of artists. And then Marvel is just kind of like diversity sells, diversity sells. Come on. You know, the good thing about them only having a s- small team of writers at DC tight continuity. Yes. And that's yeah, something that, that, that the comic book industry needed. Desperately. Yes. Yeah. Rebirth again. Rebirth saved them, and you know that's why yeah. I can't beat Jeff Johns because he made that call, and I respect it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was so excited when Jeff Johns like took over the DC movies, and then like he left. I was like, well, there it goes. It's yeah. over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, but the thing is, like, what's going on with five G? That's the problem. Like, they're trying to do the same thing apparently, or like a whole new step it's, into a new direction. And I, well, I, I don't know. I think they realized they messed up by taking too long to get Doomsday Clock out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the biggest thing, honestly. And yeah. and when yeah. you when you do when you make a change to a character that pisses off people who don't even read comic books, like, <laughs> then you got a problem. And that and I'm talking about Bendis revealing Superman's secret identity to the world. Yeah. Because you not like, like that? Every, No, I don't because I'm just like, why? Like why? You know, it's, it's, who knows who Clark Kent is really? That's true. And I know. I know I, he's a big report. I know he's a reporter and everything, but it's just I don't see a benefit to it. See, I do not. I have not read the run yet. I haven't caught up on Superman. So. I haven't either because I. I, I heard only, that. I was like, I don't want to read that. I've only I, read Bendis' Legion of Superheroes, but I like the the thing about I like about him revealing that um, Superman's Clark Kent is that they're taking another risk and that's something they just haven't done. And that's something mm-hmm. I'd rather them do and try and maybe find a way to reverse it as they've done to Spider-Man many times. Um, but I'd and rather just see that risk, you know, than that's anything. one of the things I, I'm kind of 
I'm kind of bummed, I'm bummed about though, because I'm just like, I know I sound kind of hypocritical because I'm saying that you got to update these heroes and I'm mad that they're changing it. But, uh, you know, I, I just know that they're, they're going to pull what they did with Spider-Man. Like you were saying that they're going to go back on it if they do. Yeah. You know, and it didn't um, really make any sense when Spider-Man did it. I'm like, who knows who Peter, like really who knows who yeah. Peter Parker. And that's yeah. the thing. Peter Parker is <laughs> supposed to be the nobody. And that's why you yeah. relate to him, you know? So, like, I don't know. I mean, if we're being honest here, I I like when writers and teams try something new, but at the same time, I like, this is going to be a weird comparison, but I like my superheroes to be very vanilla, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I have have fun when Batman is doing Batman stuff. He's in the alleys, he's fighting villains. There's that core thing you need. Yeah, and like... With each character. I'm okay with shaking of the roots a bit and shaking the ground. Just make sure you definitely have a backup plan to get everything full circle again. Yeah. Like, I think think that's where Tom King, you know, I love Tom King and I loved his Batman run. You know, it wasn't the best, but I did really enjoy, you know, I picked it up every single time it came out, but um, it didn't end well. No, it felt rushed because he got too busy. DC put more. DC had him writing so much. (laughs) Yeah. And it got too much because now he's like working on TV shows and film and I'm happy for him that he's doing that. But this comes back to like, you know, they're relying on the same like four or five people to do so much. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. And that's, that's why I think that they, Oh, and one more thing before, before we move on to that, to the next point I want to talk about. Uh, I like that. I thought that it was great that Batman was going to get married to Catwoman. I'm like, finally. Yeah. I think that that would have been perfect. And then they copped out on it. I was like, that's everything that's wrong with comic books. Yeah. Just (laughs) let it happen. Yeah. It's it's, it's, it's a natural thing. And I, I hate Damian Wayne. I could, he's like my least favorite Robin (laughs) more than Jason Todd. Like, but I know what you mean. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing with, with him and John Kent, Superman's son, I was like, that made me like him. Yeah, that yeah. was great because he yeah. wasn't actually that – like, Damien can be rude and nasty, mm-hmm. but that child fun – or, like, that childhood fun he had with Jonathan Kent was it good. It taught stuff. him how to be a kid. Yeah, yeah. and it was mm-hmm. awesome to read. And then, like, mm-hmm. the pet's got an issue, like, Crypto yeah. and Ace – yeah, or no. It was uh, Titus or whatever. Yeah, it humanized all the characters. And, uh, and that's something that DC, I think, needed. And, you know – it was heartbreaking when like you see kind of how how sad Damien was when John finally came back as like older. Yeah, cuz he like progressed in age or something. Yeah, and he was just like, "Okay then, you know, I guess I lost <laughs> like he felt like he lost his friend." And I'm just like, "Yeah, I feel bad for you." Yeah. Like, so I I don't know. And well with 5G, yeah, I just um I've tried I've looked into it every so while and I just I just feel like it was an idea that they had that they're not going to pull through with. And like, this is, this is where I'm worried though, because like they, they pretty much want to do, this is the fifth generation they're calling it. They want to do the exact same. Like, do you not learn from history? They want to do the exact same thing that Marvel did and pass on all the mantles of their most popular characters, Superman, Batman, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Awesome. Yeah. And everything. I'm just like, cause that worked out so well for, for Marvel. So, yeah. I mean, Tom King teased that Catwoman's going to be pregnant, and I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, Huntress. They're having that Earth 2 kind of Yeah, they're going to have their play. Earth... It's Earth 1. Yeah, it's Earth, yeah, it's Earth 1. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that's yeah, right. I uh, forgot about the multiverses. Um, so and confusing. I guess that's where... I'm assuming they're going to have him step down? Probably to be like a dad, basically. Right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'd be okay with like If, yeah. if, See, if like, Dick Grayson it, takes over again or something like that... like. I'd be okay with that. I'm cool with that. Or, yeah. dude, I mean, Alfred's dead. If they want to really make Batman tragic, uh, the kid's not going to survive, and he's going to become dark again. That's yeah. a cop out too. You know, that's, that's a like, way to go back. <laughs> but I'm this fine. is kind of well. Like for me personally, I'm fine either way. They could have him be a dad. They could have the kid die. They could have another Batman, and I don't care. Well, I mean, I would, but you know, as long as eventually we get our Bruce Wayne back, that's my thing. Yeah. You know, why, it's, you go ahead, have fun and do that. Yeah, I, I think that comics should really just doing. An... Hold on, here I'm not. My brain just froze. So okay, well, well, this is this kind of goes back to what what I what I was thinking. You know that they that they really need to do to fix everything is just get rid of individual issues. 
cut back all the se- like there's way too many comic book series yes for yeah. anybody to follow 100 percent agree yeah. yeah there's way too much to consume and it's saturated to- like yeah, with it's x-men that- marv i mean deadpool uh batman it, it, spider-man everything it's it's saturated when you look at like the mainline superheroes and realize how many books they honestly have like Batman's this, always been oversaturated to oh, me yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause like he's their cash cow, but that's why everybody's sick of Batman sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. People like me don't help when I buy like three or five, <laughs> but yeah, you're part, yeah, you're part of the problem, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. I'm part of the problem. Well, I mean, let's say fans definitely are part of the problem, but that's a whole yeah. different story. Uh, um, but like, you know, you look at like Marvel, how many different stories of Spider-Man are there? How you many know? Deadpool? Oh, Dude, at one point they had 14 Deadpool titles out. Are you 14. serious? Yes. 14? 14 Deadpool. This was like two or three years ago. And when Deadpool was huge and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I don't like Rob Liefeld at all. I don't think Deadpool should get like that much recognition in general. No, I, okay. You guys want to set up, set up, set off a little, like a uh, little space here in the, the podcast. Talk about lo- Rob Liefeld. I, I think we should do a whole episode. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We'll save that for next time. We're saving Rob Liefeld for another episode. I'd be down. We'll do some Rob Liefeld interview, like uh, research, and then we'll, just, we'll just go to town. We'll trash him on the podcast, and then like later on, he'd be like, hey, I'd love to be on your podcast when yeah. we get famous. And we'll be like, oh. We'll, we'll get famous because he'll tw- cause he's, always, he's like, uh, I think I saw Brandon's tw- uh, Instagram say he's like, He's constantly on Twitter, is just going ham. Oh, he's the oh, Donald he Trump argues, of he, the comic book uh, industry. Yeah, he yeah. argues with people. He, yeah, so when like, Dan Didio got fired, he was so disrespectful, and he he's the Donald Trump of the comic book industry. He does he just says whatever comes to his uh, mind, and he does has no filter, and he's just dumb. He's ignorant. Like, and I don't even like Dan Didio, and I thought that that was disrespectful for what he was saying about him. And so we're going to diss him. We're going to do hashtag Rob Liefeld sucks. And then he's going to make us famous by essentially arguing Down. with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, oh, Dan DiDio, um, how did you guys feel about the firing? How did you guys feel about Dan going, having to go through all that? It's, I go ahead, Brandon. Oh, sorry. I feel like I keep cutting you off, Danny. I'm so sorry. We're, we're cutting each other. We're all cutting each other off. Yeah, here. We're, all, we're all triggered and ranting. Yeah. yeah, all of us. I, I'm it. pent up with so much emotion. I got to get all this out. <laughs> um, with Dan Didio gone, Dan Didio, how are you pronounce it? It's just the like Dio. The Dio. Uh, it was people were blaming him for so much at DC, and a lot of people were like paying respect to him. You know, like saying like, "Oh, it was an honor working with you." Like. It was all over if because you, you know mm-hmm. we all know if you're into this you follow pretty much everyone in the industry because it's such yeah. a small space of actual people on there, so you know you see it all basically, and you know it's like you see this mixed bag of the kind of person he was and how people like felt about him, and you know for me personally I was just like I don't really know who to blame here because. There's so many YouTube videos and podcasts and like people on social media blaming solely him and then other people, you know, kind of like saying, well, he allowed this and praising that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know it's a little vague, but like anything else, it's all over the place. And to me, I just feel like in this industry, it's more of like, for the most part, not entirely, but, you know, it's everyone, you know, involved. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like. It's hard to say. I mean, I don't know what you guys got to say about it, but. Well, you know, he was with the company for what? Nine, like what? 17 years or something like that? 19 almost 20. Years? He, yeah. Like, yeah. Almost 20 like practically two decades of working with him was like an honor or something like that. Yeah. yeah. He, I basically got into comic books. My entire life of reading comic books has basically been Dan's run on DC comics. Essentially, yeah. you know, um, and I didn't it, mind him before he was head honcho. Yeah, me either. Um, and I think, you know, some of the moves he made, the Convergence, wasn't a fan of, like, some of the, the stuff. New like, 52. You know, the New 52. And, you know, we see the mistakes that came from that, but there was a lot of good that came out of that, too, you know? Yeah. And we're getting better material because of it. Um, we also got to look at this, too. And, you know, nobody wants to, to talk about this, probably because, like, he's a living god among comic books, too, is that, you know, how much for a lot of the stuff that was happening at DC – you know, like like the new fifty two and all these these bad runs. How much of that was Jim Lee's fault? <laughs> yeah, we were I'd just talking about, like about 50, Jim Lee. Yeah, I'd say about fifty percent because I love his art and everything, but he is not a good writer. We were talking about him earlier. I, I don't know how to feel about him because, like, you know, Jim. You know, watching. I've been. 
had a lot of downtime recently and I was like organizing my comics and we were building puzzles. We were watching this image uh, comics documentary. It's on Amazon prime too. If you guys mm-hmm. want to check it out, but looking at all the risks that everyone took for image top comics, especially Todd going in there and, you know, stating what they're going to do. And he was like the main guy in front of all that, um, which is why I respect Todd McFarlane because he put his foot down and he stood by it. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I do respect him for that. Yeah. Everyone said that, you know, Todd said, I'm not going back to DC or Marvel. And only recently did he do that only for collaboration purposes, 20 years later, you know, but yeah. Jim Lee yeah, did. Money. Yeah. And money. Yeah. Well, Todd's always <laughs> been about the money, you know, that's, yeah. about- that's yeah, why he's I- a million. That's why he's a multimillionaire now. <laughs> if, yeah. if your comic comes out and three years later, you have an animated film or a live action film and a toy figure line. You're about the money <laughs> with the character that you actually got to like keep the rights to. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Exactly. I don't blame him though. You yeah. Know? yeah <laughs> no, I mean, that, <laughs> the, right the movies, comic book industry know? was treating their treats their creators like, like garbage. So, I mean, like image had to happen. Yeah. Which is a godsend for sure. But yeah. I mean, you look at the moves that Rob Liefeld and I'm sorry to say, but Jim Lee made, they went back to Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Jim Lee went back to DC. Jim Lee is a good man up front. And I love Jim Lee. I've met him many times. I have many signatures. I have many yeah. things by Jim Lee. I respect him immensely, but he is not that kind of risk taker. Like if you and no. a group of friends are going to go somewhere and you get busted by the cops, he's going to be the one trying to get out of it. And he's not going to help anyone, you know, yeah. you know, and you you know ride or die. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. really the, what you guys just said perfectly sums up the problems with the new 52. Oh, yeah. was that they wanted to have their cake and eat it too. They did not they they said, "Okay, we're restarting from the beginning." But all the the cool stories we wrote before this or like that happened before this in the post crisis, that those are still canon. You know, it's like you can't yeah. have both. Can't you mind-boggling, you know. You know? Yeah. New, 50, new 52 is like we're going to make these new stories and make hip new versions of the characters, what Harry want to see it. And we're going to wink at the people that read everything beforehand and we're going to make new stories for the new readers. And then we're going to combine it all somehow. And, like, and it was, it made no sense. It, it made disaster. no sense at all. And then, you know, and, and then for some reason, Jim Lee's like on the forefront of everything new at DC. And I don't get it still personally, because mm-hmm. I've always said, I get it. It's an industry that you make money and I think his X-Men was cool and all that stuff. But I just, I mean, I've always said he's kind of the definition of a sellout 100%. Hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, dude. Again, it's about the money, right? But like, I don't know. I mean, if you have nine kids to support, yeah, it's going to be about the money. Yeah. Yeah, uh, He's got a lot of, he's got a lot of kids. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, well, okay. Why his? Style? I'm not going to make that. Joke. I was gonna, I was about to make a joke, but maybe we'll, 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 let's do this one off the air. I don't know if you guys knew where I was going with this, but um, well, I mean, and Jim, I'm curious what we're going to see next because it's up to him at this point. I, I don't know of anyone filling uh, the deal shoes. I don't know if they're going to, you know, split that role again. I don't know who. I mean, if they do, Jimmy Palamoni should be the one who gets that role because he's can- around. For I can see that. and all that. Totally. Yeah, he's I been totally, that. totally underrated too. I feel. Yeah, I, J- Jimmy Palamoti, He helped a lot with like Daredevil over at Marvel, and mm-hmm. he Marvel Knights took off. Yeah, when he was on that with Joe Caseta. And, and think about that, like. Stories like Marvel Knights, dude, we need stories like that again. We love yeah. that nitty gritty. Like you get a message out of it. You learn something out of it. There's a moral, there's a theme, but those were great books that they were putting out at that time. And yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like you could do these nitty gritty down to earth characters and you can make them, you know, relatable to people of any sort, but just have that natural approach. Then Marvel Knights have that feel to it, you know? Marvel yeah. Knights was kind of edgy and like violent even. And like, it didn't mm-hmm. feel shoved down your throat. It just, it just flowed, you know? I noticed that about Marvel though, is that like when they go violent, they go very violent. Ultimatum. Yeah. Uh, uh, ultimatum. Such the whole ultimate universe. Like I, it's just <sighs> awesome. That man. was, huh? But, I loved it. Okay. We're, we're going to have to do another, that, another episode. <laughs> yeah, well, but, um, we're, we're coming up with so many new ideas for episodes, but, uh, but over at DC, like I personally wouldn't want Jim Lee taking over. And I think, no. you know, Dan did it. wasn't going to last forever. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, you always have to rotate in new fresh meat and yeah. 
Well, I, I never, Dan was good because he used to work on soap operas before going into, like he was always a fan of comics, but he worked on yeah. soap operas. And when you think about soap operas, it's meant for, you know, 30 episode seasons that are going and going for years and years and years. Yeah. And having to do that in the comic book industry is a challenge because of that continuity aspect. But all things considered, I mean, we got some cool stuff out of it. And especially what we, we were the last, what, three years, I want to say? But since Rebirth, Rebirth has been phenomenal. Dude, yeah, man. Rebirth was awesome when it first started. Batman was a little shaky. I still liked it, but it got better. And I honestly wouldn't what, mind Jeff Johns taking over. I wouldn't oh, either. Yeah. Jeff Johns. I think he's too wrapped up with film stuff. Yeah, I know. My, yeah. my problem with Jeff Johns is he's everywhere. It's like, mm-hmm. you want the best Green Lantern run? Jeff Johns. You want the best Aquaman run? Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns. You know? Yeah. 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 You, know who like, I, you know who I really miss, though, is uh, I had to pull his name up here because I always forget it. Paul Levitz. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I met him for like five seconds at Comic Con. Yeah. yeah, when he was in charge, of, he was president. He, I don't think he was he was editor in chief. No, he, he was president. president. Yeah, and you know, people he got a lot of hate from people while he was in there, saying that he didn't let the characters grow up and everything. You know, they need to be more violent and dark and gritty and all that. I am so happy that he kept them from going down that road, though. And now a lot of people realize that you know, like, look, that's why Rebirth is so successful. Is keeping them true to themselves that they don't all need to be like, you know, what Zack Snyder envisions in the movies, <laughs> uh, you know, dark, gritty and brooding and all that. that. That doesn't make a good story or a good character. And I really miss that. I, I grew up reading his like uh, DC when he was in charge. And I really miss that era. Yeah. I can yeah. see what you're coming from there. No. Yeah. We don't know who's going to take over. And with everything going on now, it's like, you know, everything was on its last crutch and, 5G was going to be the make it or break it. Mm-hmm. I don't and, buy that at all. I don't think it was. Gonna, well, I don't think AT and T was going to get rid of DC Comics. I don't think that they're going to go anywhere. Well, the no. rumor that was going around was to save money, they're going to own the properties but loan them out to other companies, like Marvel mm-hmm. publishing DC characters to save money, essentially. Oh, so, there'll be a riot. Fans yeah, will not they, buy. They it. rake in. They rake in the profit of like the books because you know they get a certain percentage, and they don't pay their workers. Marvel would. Yeah, somebody so, somebody mentioned like put out the idea that like AT and T might spin DC off into like their own thing, and they would keep like the video games, the figures, mm-hmm. like all the revenue for that. But they would just be strictly comics. They'd be gone in like six months tops. Yeah, there's no way they'd survive. They close. Yeah, yeah. and but, I mean, what do you guys think of the rumor of like this is the end of the comic book? Well, I I think honestly. The comic book industry was always going to be around, minus the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and the comic books have been, they've been on the verge, like, we've been hearing that comic books were going to close since the 90s, ever since yeah. the 90s comic crash, so. I mean, well, me if you look at, like, oh, I'm sorry, go for it. Oh, no, it's fine. I just keep talking out loud and cutting everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, when you look at, like, early stories, like, Stanley and Jack Kirby, they thought the doors were going to close the next day. That's why some of these comics we got were so ridiculous in the golden age, you know? it's it's a pattern that comic books go through every couple of decades that they're about to die. They're about to stop all this stuff. And it's always about to happen. But in the bigger picture, it's storytelling. Storytelling is not going to go anywhere. If you put the greatest artist in the room with the greatest, um, if you put the greatest artist in a room with the greatest writer in in the world, you're going to get a comic book. Like you're just going to wind up with that and they're not going to go anywhere. There's more creators always coming out. There's independent books um, to find new ways to distribute Um, the internet's another place. Um, I don't think comic books are ever going to go anywhere. Yeah. And I I think we should, we should make it clear too. I think that we're all in a green greens here on this is that when we say like, are we witnessing the end of the comic book industry? Like, are they going to close or whatever? We're talking about Marvel and DC because I don't think IDW dark horse or, uh, image are going to go anywhere no because they uh, are surviving off of comic books Mm -hmm. and they're doing just fine major publishers so the way i saw it i was going to say was i think in terms of comics in general mainly speaking like the major distributors the big two Mm -hmm. um, i think it was kind of trekking through the mud in the graveyard (laughs) yeah yeah and it it was slowly walking into the grave you know it was eventually going to rise again but I think, honestly, because of the pandemic, without comic shops around, it w- if it continues this way where, you know, nobody is able to distribute, and I'm talking, like, complete, like, cut off, mm-hmm. I could see it dying and then resurging 
eventually. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. that was DC's plan originally. I think they wanted to create 5G to just say, screw it, get it out. If it fails, we close it all down, we shut down and just stop. And then five years from now, we do like this weird thing where we relaunch everything. You know, you thought it was dead. Well, here it is. AT and T like teases like the DC logo with like all the Justice League silhouettes in the back. Yeah, and like and the hero, you yeah. know, the heroes you know and love are back. And you know, here's your number one issues: Bruce Wayne is Batman, Clark Kent is Superman, blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And they're here for good now. You know what I mean? That's what I saw happening, where they cancel everything and then capitalize on the number ones five years from now or something. Yeah. Well, I don't know but, why I, I mentioned, I think I mentioned this earlier, but let's like, you know, every three years or something, just do a soft reboot, do an arc and then start. And then, you know, don't start over from the beginning, but kind of just start a new thing. Be like, okay, now new readers can get in. Like here, if you want, if you're a new reader, this is where you jump in. If they you know, we, I think the coolest thing is, uh, and I'm so sorry, Frank, cause you're gonna catch this a lot, but you know what? <laughs> Continuity, dude. Like, just give us stories. These stories that we're getting from, like, Black Label, The Question, this three-issue mm-hmm. miniseries is awesome. The stuff that we're getting, um, Miracle Man, um, Strange Adventures. Dude, these miniseries that are 12 issues long are the best stories that we're getting. Ex- exactly. And that's why I'm saying that, like, I think that they're they're their best if, if – well, okay, well, over at Marvel, like, first off, Fire Half – Get rid of your riders. Just, 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 just go. Them, uh, where, where are they? Where are they getting? Where are they getting these people? I'm just like, <laughs> do you have any like experience in writing anything else? Like, it gives me so much hope just to get into the industry. So I could go, it, no, exactly. I, I feel like we could do a better job than that. So uh, I just looked at my pool list. Like uh, I have to pick up whenever I can. That's still at the comic shop, and mm-hmm. I realize I'm only reading like four different writers at Marvel. Yeah, dude, I'm reading <laughs> yeah. Donny Cates and Jason Aaron. That's like I, uh, it's his art scene. For me, it's uh, Chip Zdarsky, uh, Donny Cates, Nick Spencer, and Kelly Thompson. Oh, that's Nick it. Spencer, yeah. And Kelly Thompson's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's literally... probably they're like the only good writers. Oh, and Jonathan Hickman, of course. I mean. Uh, oh, yeah. Hickman killed it on X-Men. That stuff's great, dude. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't give a crap about X-Men. And then I said, what? Hickman's but on? Dude, oh, man. <laughs> oh, we, could, we could do a whole episode on X-Men, how much of a mess yeah, that oh, is. Yeah. But, yeah. like, but, X, but, I mean, X-Men's been bad, so it's another one of those titles. It's saturated, though. Like, it's yeah. never recovered from the '90s comic crash. No, it never, never. did. Yeah, huh. it and, sold and, so much they just went over their heads and like. Went yeah, over their and and you know that's why I think that like comic books so is just like get rid of the individual issues per month because like what kid is going to go in there and pay two ninety nine a. For like, if say like, oh, I, I want to read, you know, I want to read all the individual members of the Justice League, the big, the classic seven, and then like kind of like the movies are, and then I right. want to read the crossover. Dude, that's I fifty bucks a week. Exactly. When I was yeah. doing that, I was paying almost a hundred bucks a month, and I was like, I can't afford this anymore. So, get rid of like have continuity. I think continuity is important, but like not don't make it that it's like you need to read all the back issues to get the story. So oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, get rid of individual issues and just a couple graphic novels. You know, every like one at least one graphic novel a month from some from one character you know you got the teen titans and everybody and and it's a complete arc you give your artists and your writers time to write a good story and you don't you don't have to read any back issues or anything and you know on no waiting for next month or whatever and you just unless it's like a two-parter graphic mm-hmm. novel and you have everything right there because i mean that's how most people read comics now is just they wait for the graphic novel yeah, because you could true. get it way cheaper. I mean, yeah. you pay twenty bucks for a graphic. If you add all seven, ten issues, you're paying fifty bucks. You know, yeah. and then you get other stuff. You get like bonus, like you know, sketchbooks in the back from like you know the the artists and everything. And, and it's, it's or something. Yeah, and you don't have an ad between every other page. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like a lot yeah. of them now. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird because I mean, I I'm a collector too. Like on top of being passionate about it, like I love getting stuff signed. I love getting stuff CGC. Like. Uh, oh yeah me too sketch covers and all that it's i'm i completely agree with you because i mean i i wait for stuff i mean if i'm gonna buy a series i have to wait for it to you know get the first volume out you know then i read six issues <laughs> and that, take, that could take forever sometimes that's why i'm always so behind you know yeah and it's it's one of those things like i'm totally in agreement, but at the same time i love that single issue feel but I would I save so much that. more money because I know bags and boards and yeah, you know I, all that type of stuff. Like it's in a collector's aspect, maybe they should just do one shots 
And then you have this key issue that is 48 pages or something, you know, yeah. uh, oversized. And those are the individual issues. And then you get the yeah. full story in a graphic. I think like that maybe, is- maybe, yeah, like the one, like, so the full, yeah, like the full continuity is, is the, the big, the big book. And then you have the little one shot stories like base in the universe, kind of like, you know, you have like infinity war, like for people who, you know, just listen to this are not really into comics, which I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this here. But like, you have Infinity War, which is a big one with everybody, and then you have like the little story, like Ant Man, yeah. you know, which is just a little side story in that's in this bigger universe. And yeah. yeah, I think that that would be fine. I think make it so that people don't have to buy, you know, everything. everything um, you know, yeah, yeah. make it easy for the reader to get into it. And if you get good writers and everything, and you advertise well, then you'll get kids on back on to reading comics yeah 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 i can see that i think you gotta see it in two different perspectives kind of like what you both are literally saying i think from a consumer standpoint you appreciate it more when it's all together you save mm-hmm. money you save time you you save paper really yeah <laughs> you know? yeah that's a big thing you know, too you know we are i feel so bad because i'm like I'm super, i'm like an advocate about climate change like all this type of stuff like i i you know I'm really political in that sense, but I buy comics, all up comics the every week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, <laughs> I felt horrible too. Cause like, you know, when I was, I have like a stack of comics like this of stuff that was like, okay, I read them. Now what? They're just <laughs> sitting here taking up space at my house. Yeah. I know what you mean. And I think, uh-huh. and that's what I was gonna say. I think as a collector, it's hard to break that format because comics are literally built for OCD collectors like mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. Like I, I take very like big pleasure in just organizing my comics and also admiring my zero through 52 run of like Batman. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's or, what I have. Like, I mean, look at me. I got all mine hanging up on the wall. Like that's dude, just like my, a little bit of them. I've got like maybe four to seven boxes, long bo- boxes. Oh uh, yeah. Maybe and, too. You know, it's just like, I just hit I box have, 34. I have three boxes, but I, I just... Box 34? Yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always just go to, to shops. I'll be like, if it's just like random, like older issues from like the 70s or something, I'll just be like 200 bucks for 200 comics. And I'll just take them. And then like, sometimes I'll sell them at a convention for individual price or whatever. And mm-hmm. I'll pick out all the ones I like, you know, yeah. that I want to keep. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's because like comics have started that collector format in a way, or they at least help yeah. and like create that whole... I guess like niche hobby of collecting. And well, that's what kind of, that's covers. what hurt them. Yeah. Huh? That's what hurts them. Yeah. The foil covers they put out. Have yeah, you, I, mean, I, guys so I call, I call it the foil age, you know, yeah. like, yeah. I got, I got one right here. There's I, a foil, got, the foil of the, the top of Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> but like, I think for the collector aspect, it's going to be hard to transition into a new format because, you know, it's weird to go from having issue one to 85 of Tom King's Batman to go into like James Tinian's the fourth's like collection books one through six, you know? Like, yeah. 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 It's weird to adjust that format. Cause also the library you, has 42 audible titles. Sorry. That was my Alexa for some reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, the Marvel and DC, they're listening to us. Yeah. Right yeah they're listening. Uh, no, Rob uh, Liefeld can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's like, uh, at the same time, it's the way you store them. You know, when you have collected books, they sit nicely on your bookshelf, right? Mm -hmm. They're there because you've read them, but also because you take pleasure in that satisfaction of lining your books up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's be honest, we're all not putting our single issues on the shelf. We put them in a box and then hide them in a corner. Yeah, exactly. And you lose, you don't, or I wouldn't say you lose, but you kind of, that whole approach changes to how you consume your media and store it. And, you know, that may let, that may lead into people buying less because they can't display as much or it's too big to put in a box, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, omnibuses, I'm a huge omnibus collector and uh, dude, storing those get hard. That's <laughs> but, like, omnibus. That's like the way to go though. With some serious. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got- my- nice stack of omnibus that saved me a lot of space. Uh, oh, my yeah. girl, my girl wanted to try to get into uh, reading, Dark Phoenix, hold on. Can you let her out? I know, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, my the cat the cat is the cat needs help. Um cats haven't evolved to open doors yet. I don't know why. It's it's ridiculous. She comes in now when she pleases. Uh, okay. Uh lucky. My cat's 
<laughs> did, did you teach my cat how to do that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she wanted to get into reading the the Dark Phoenix saga, huh. and she she got like one of the graphic novels because like, I haven't read it yet. And I, I want to, and I was like, yeah, that should be enough. And then apparently, it's like an omnibus that's like this big, yeah, for to get yeah. the whole story. And like, if you want like like the streamlined version, you get the ones like that. Yeah, so it's like, oh, okay. Like a- it's kind of like when my girlfriend was wanting to read comics and I told her about fables mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, just to make sure you like it only buy the first one. Cause this is like 23 volumes, yeah. you know? So at least right. it's an easier pill to swallow. If you buy the first one and don't like it, then you're not stuck with like 10 books, you know? Yeah. yeah. Some people are like, I'm going to read the first vol five volumes or something. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. But well, anyway, yeah, I mean, the- just comic books in general, like, well, what do you guys think about, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about physical books and everything. What do you guys think about like the digital age, digital trend? Do you think, you know, I don't, I don't personally believe that physical books will ever disappear, you know, because that's just mm-hmm. the way things work. Um, but do you think we would ever transition to just digital? Uh, no, no, I, it's the same thing with like, cause I mean, look, we got audible, we got everything else with like regular books. I mean, and people, people like variety. Yeah. That's you know, I mean. You know, so just because somebody listens to Audible doesn't mean that they don't like picking up a physical book once in a while or, mm-hmm. or reading on a Kindle, you know. Yeah. Well, like Stan options. Lee said it the best, and I'm quoting Stan Lee, so it can't even be that inappropriate. But he said, comic books are like boobs. They're great on paper, but they're just so much better in your hands. I mean, hey. I can't argue with that logic. <laughs> hey, he's right. I mean, hey, I mean, who, who's going to argue with that? Um, I mean, well, we are all three, like, uh, Grown men, right? <laughs> yeah, we're mature men. As I'm, we'll take a poll on our Instagram. So yeah, you got my got my action <laughs> figures here in the background. Yeah, I'm a grown adult with my <laughs> yeah. man Excuse background. Excuse me, you know. Uh, um, no, I, I, I told my girlfriend about this, and this is just like a random conversation we had. Where, you know, I don't plan on having a family or anything. I know this is like really out of left field. And like, I always thought of if I never did, I'm getting buried with my comics. That's going to be in my will. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause who am I going to give them to? But I was like, if I magically ever had kids, whoever knows when, or, you know, where I'm at in my life, there's this weird satisfaction on donating to your, you know, even if it's not like your child, like a little brother, a cousin, mm-hmm. a niece, a nephew, nephew yeah. like, physically saying here are my books now have them yeah yeah can't do that digitally first of all it's locked to your account and don't get me wrong it's definitely about convenience right yeah you know there's something different than going here's my login and password as opposed to saying here's my books yeah for sure exactly Mm -hmm. you know and i i feel like for comic you know as someone who appreciates the craft and the medium and someone who wants the industry to last forever in order to help that longevity, I would have to be take my part into it, not only hopefully writing for it one day, but being like, here is the stories I had growing up. Now you enjoy them. Yeah. And I, Oh, go for it. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I mean, I'll extend it all a branch to like the whole, like, you know, keeping the issues or issues around thing. Like, like you said, like, or like, you, you know, you, you're saying that like, you know, it is, it, it's going to be hard for people to adapt to that. What I think they could do if they wanted to keep individual issues around, actually have one issue a month, not three or two, cut the series down. Like each outside of, you know, every character, you know what? Outside of like action comics and detective comics, and then you have Superman and, and Batman. Yeah. Everybody gets one series. There's yeah. no, no, nobody gets multiple series. Not everybody needs a series. No. You know, like I think the Marvel movies kind of ironically kind of prove that, that like there are some characters that are just fine as reoccurring characters. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We're Except for the Hulk, the he still needs series. a sequel, you know? Uh, yeah. He needs a, a proper Hulk sequel. Yes. I'm still waiting. Damn it. Marvel. I do. But, I mean, look at Spider-Man. There's like the symbiote Spider-Man. There's amazing, friendly, sensational. Like at one point, all of these spectacular, spectacular I mean, it's ridiculous. Point, that was all out at once. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in complete agreement with that is that they need to narrow it down because it's, it's hard for a new reader to come in and be like, well, I want to get a book, 
Yeah. But like, which Spider-Man title do I choose from? You know? Yeah. So can yeah. You imagine, can you imagine if like DC launched 5G and you get like still like a solid four Superman books? Yeah. It's Who's like, going to read that? Yeah. It's like, here's the new Superman, the younger one. And here's what Clark Kent is actually doing. You know, I could see and, that happening. And here's his son. And then his, yeah. here's his son's second book. Oh, and there's yeah. Legion of Superheroes, you know? like Yeah. It's, so I, I think, that, you know, if they just had just a, a, a few series going on, you know, to get all the, you know, obviously the main characters and then you have your group books and everything. And then once, a, once in a while you have a big crossover, not mm-hmm. every month, mm-hmm. you know, Maybe like once a year at most. <laughs> yeah. Once or twice a year is fine. Yeah. You know, you don't need one like every couple months cause it gets old and then, you know, they need to work on having, cause you have your physical copies also push having, digital copies and audio and, and audio books, yeah. you know, for them. I was like, yeah. Happen, yeah, I, it's hard to say. Cause you know, everyone there's like, we, we sit and talk, like it's easy to run an industry. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I try to remind myself that like, if I was given the, and I'm not trying to knock any idea. I agree with all this a hundred percent. I think like, if we had the luck to actually work in the industry, all three of us, like we could, and we had influence, it could possibly help. Like, cause there's He's definitely people. For an editor. <laughs> we just, cause we're thinking what other people are thinking. Exactly. Yeah, it's not exactly. just us three on the internet, like complaining about what's going on. There's other people feeling the same way. Mm-hmm. And I think when actually in that environment and working in like that industry, it's hard to make these decisions. Right. So I don't know what they got planned, but I will say that like digital comics are really good for, you know, people trying to get into stuff too. I do see why they do digital comics so often, like the DC Mm -hmm. universe app and comicology. I mean, I had to use comicology for the book that me and Brandon just read sweet tooth because I didn't have access to it, you know, Mm -hmm. but I think again, you know, if you're going to have a collective library, like you have to have everything too. You know what I mean? Like DC Universe is missing so much that I would love to read that's not on there just because they, it's just like when they put a movie on there, they wait like six months, 90 days of the new stuff. Yeah. What we actually want. Yeah. 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 And when you're, when you're reading comics and trying to get to comics, you want to be like, well, I want to read what's out right now. And if you can't do that, it's kind of like, well, I could just go somewhere else and get this. So making that digital trend more accessible and not, I mean, honestly, I, I feel like if you're not, buying a physical copy you shouldn't have to pay the same price on digital exactly 100 percent. because you're not paying for the ads or anything yeah, yeah and, and you're paying for you're not paying for paper quality in either you know yeah and honestly you like commit to some of these things because i feel like the comic companies just they do something and then it just fizzles out and they don't really do anything else with it yeah. you got to commit to these things if you want to keep people coming back and on there's another thing they need to do. I think they, first off, they, they need to look at manga, what manga is doing, right? Cause manga is more popular than ever with mm-hmm. people of all ages. Yeah. And secondly, you know, go talk to these guys who ran the comic books in their heyday while they're still around, you know, John Byrne, George Perez, Joe, Joe Sinnott. He's like, 98 99 years old <laughs> he's there yeah and he's yeah. he just retired he had to retire because like the man inked comics until he physically couldn't do it anymore mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it his, was awesome and then you know, uh john ramita Ju- or not junior senior. john ramita senior is he still alive yeah 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 like talk to these guys while they're still around and, yeah, they you know, did something right that worked. It was also the first appearance of a lot of stuff they created, though, too. It, okay. True, but they okay. bring them but in look more at, again. Yeah, that's the, that's but, such a big thing. But look at Bur- like look what John Byrne did with Superman. That is one of my favorite Superman runs, and to me, defines yeah. the modern Superman. Like they knew how to keep characters relevant while keeping their core, you know, while yeah. keeping everything right. The, and. These- these are the people that revolutionized the characters during the silver age, basically. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, they know what they're doing and yeah, the industry should look to them and go, okay, mm-hmm. what did you analyze and what did you study to make this work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, George Perez, I mean, he had to retire cause like he's got eye problems and everything. Like I said, these guys aren't going to be around for much longer. Yeah. So I think 
I was going to say real quick before we forget about the whole digital thing. I think the the digital market needs to go all or nothing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah got to commit to it, like I was saying. Real quick, I was just like, DC Universe, I love the service. I really do. Mm-hmm. I paid the full pre uh, like full year prepaid, and yep. I dig it. I dig the movies, the TV shows, the comics. I just wish I got everything day one. Well, and, dude, that was the way it was when it first launched. Do you remember? They said that yeah. you would get the animated movies the same day as the digital release, and now it's 90 days later. Like, Yeah, it makes no sense to do that because we're paying for the service already. Like, Why screw us over uh, yeah. more, more than you already are? And, and that like, goes with current comics on there too, you know? Yeah, I yeah, think exactly. they should come out the same day as print. And I personally still wish that the cyber police are listening because I really want Marvel Unlimited on Disney Plus or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you do that, boom, we're good. I get my backlog, you know? Well, and there's so many, dude. I write, I mean, I write for a website. It's called The Daily Fandom. You guys should all hit it up. Um, oh, The Daily Fandom. I follow that. You write for them? Yeah, I do a couple articles every so while. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I wanna... even heard it. <laughs> yeah, you want to you wanna hook me up with the uh, job? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could talk to Sharika. She's super awesome. And we're revamping everything right now to more of a... Oh, yo, what's like, up? I mean, I'm graduating too, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah, an internship. Yeah. It's free. I mean, you're not getting paid, but yeah, if you want to just rant yeah. and stuff, I'm down. Okay, um, maybe, yeah. Like, I already, <laughs> like, I write for a living, so yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a cool thing. To ex- I was working on an article before we did all this. Um, but uh, and they're actually aiming to more of an academic look at comics, which is I'm super excited for. This was oh, that's cool. I don't know if I'm allowed to announce that, but this was announced yesterday. But you just did. But I just did. So uh, I don't, I don't think anyone listens dogs. to this enough to uh, get me in trouble. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, I get a lot of comics, or I don't know if this will continue, but I would get a lot of comics so we could review them. You know, um, mm-hmm. and I used to write for another website too, and they they send you comic books digitally. And it's like, well, I'm still going to go out there and buy these comics anyways. Yeah, I have them in digital format, but there's just sure. such a difference. And if yeah. reading it digital got me into it enough to go buy that trade, to go look into the back issues, then that's positive, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. it'd be it'd really benefit, honestly, if they were like, hey, here's like the first five issues of a series for free digitally. And, you know, you could pay to like buy it maybe digital or, you know, go out and buy a print copy if you wanted to. I think it could work. Yeah. Giving those number ones away don't do anything for anyone, honestly. Like whenever they're like, oh, well, we have all these number ones for free on our digital service. It's like, it doesn't do anything. You get like number ones you don't care about or like number yeah. ones that are like, like kind of, you know, halfly made and just not really made properly or, you know, however you, you want to put it. It doesn't take you anywhere. It's just like, okay, I read that number one, but I want to know what happens next. And I can't now because I yeah. don't even know where to find exactly. issue two or something, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think that you know if there's a steady streaming service that offered comics digitally or and you know as you know digital and audio books. So if people want to just listen to it on the, I know that you know half the comic book experience is seeing the art, but sometimes people just want to know what's going on on the go yeah. and everything. I mean, if there's a way to make it work, they can yeah. do it. And yeah. millennials and lot- are millennials are always on the go. That's why podcasts have become so popular and audio books. So they should have capitalized on that a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. There, if there's an audience, they'll listen if it's done right. There's what Which five of them out right now. There's what that Thor one that's out. Wolverine, um, yeah. Wolverine had a podcast. Uh, yeah. They had like there's like four or five Marvels. They're doing a podcast on Marvels right now. Yeah. Um, but I feel like they're the only Marvel might be the only one doing podcasts. Maybe Although, yeah. Yeah. Is that cool thing where oh. they got a bunch of metal artists to do a a compilation album for DC Metal? That was kind well, of. I yeah. I know that DC is doing. They have the continuation of Batman the Animated Series, which is narrated by Kevin Conroy. Oh, he just did that one episode, that one. Uh, oh, yeah. Part. But the, the – okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, one, that was supposed to be an in-print book. And, of course, they put it on Comicology so that you could still read it. But it goes by chapters, and each chapter is like 12 pages long. Mm-hmm. Um, How much do you pay for it, though? It's a dollar per chapter. So it's like 12 pages? Spent- yeah, it's not that much at all. So $3 oh. for the normal page count of a rate, more than a regular book, actually. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of, wow. and it's supposed to be like a six issue series, um, but it's stretched out to 12 chapters now because they're doing it digitally. 
that's kind of what you're talking about really on like digital for the price actually. Yeah, exactly. And that makes sense, you know, and at yeah. least they're delivering. I mean, I don't get why. Yeah. Everything's going down right now and you can't buy physical books, but everyone should have pushed like, Hey, get our books digital. You'll still get all of these. And you know what? They give us codes to download a digital copy. Dude, just give us something so we could get a physical copy or a half off a physical copy or something. Yeah. And I know that goes towards comic book shops and everything, but you're still getting a sale and you're not putting your industry on hold and your industry is still bringing some income in. Yeah. And yeah. what uh, what I think, um, you know, th- this would obviously this this wouldn't help comic book shops too, but like if they, they, I think they should revamp their subscription service where you get like, cause I did the thing where I got DC comics and I got it for my sister. I got her some of her favorite heroes. I, I got her a year subscription for like, I think I got her wonder woman, Supergirl, And oh, I remember that back in the day, you'd see in the back of books and everything to get your yeah. subscription for that series. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. DC still does that. Yeah. Right. They, they, yeah. They're but discounted, right? yeah, but it's still though. It's like, it's expensive for 12 issues. Yeah. Like it is super expensive. So I was just like, yeah, it was like, I think I ended up paying like hundreds of dollars for just like a year subscription to both to these series. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. So I I didn't know that. I mean, uh, I don't think you could do that at Marvel, but I know DC still does that where you can get your issues mailed to you. Does Diamond distribute them, or how, how does the distribute? <laughs> it co- I think it, it comes directly from DC. Oh, oh wow! Okay, oh, it comes in an okay condition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually it came in good condition, but it, it's stupid because they mail you everything at the same time in separate separately. So it's like all in separate bags and everything. I was like, why don't you just mail them all together? That's weird. like what a waste! That's a lot of waste, yeah. 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 I mean, these are all pra- like we we bring up all these practices they could do better. Like, I feel like, honestly, all this stuff that we're talking about, I think they could just, if they were to do these actual relaunches, I feel like they could implement these things to help them. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, could really, nice. like, it's not, I don't think it'd be that hard, but it's just, they're hiring out of touch writers who write mm-hmm. series like, who create superheroes like Snowflake and Safe Space. <laughs> You know, oh God, those names. Ah, I, I just, oh, that's we went from a, Superman a and Batman, some of the greatest superheroes to ever, you know, to ever grace the planet. To this, what, what's, the name, what's the name of that Green Lantern dog? Nort, the one with the mustache. I don't know. I don't know. I never. I didn't even know there was a dog with a mustache. Like, even <laughs> you didn't know there's a dog. I'm gonna look that up right now. Oh, there's the oh, squirrel. I think I know. That's what I was thinking of. I knew that there was a. I always know that there was a squirrel. I didn't know there was yeah. a dog with yeah. a mustache. Though. That's uh, Gnort. Gnort, whatever. He's a dog with a mustache, and like that name is like okay. I mean, I'll like, take that over. It's a comic booky yeah. name. Yeah. It's a sci-fi yeah. name. For, like even like Dexter is a dope name for a cat that's a red lantern. Like yeah, yeah, that's and, and it blood. still sounds it still sounds ridiculous. But like it's still it's still I don't know. It makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it sounds right. Snowflake could maybe work for her because I, I know she do, I think she does have ice power. If she doesn't have ice powers, then oh man, um, just kick it uh, out the window. Uh, just stop. Yeah. yeah, but safe so, space, safe space. I uh, uh, what like, planet it, could you make that work? Is it safe like S A V E or S A F E? It's S A F E. Safe oh, space. Um, safe space. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like, that just that on it. Um, I'm just gonna say this. That just sounds disrespectful to the audience they're trying to bring in exactly it's like okay here's some you know, you know those assholes that make fun of you all the time here's some characters that are named after that well, you know yeah. and i mean uh, characters like this that's why doom patrol and x-men and all these other teams were created and that's what they were meant to be used for is exactly for those and for those people that you know get picked on and looked down upon you know that's like the entire like, young animal line from dc was all about that and they brought yeah. i mean eternity girl dude that is all about depression and anxiety and figuring out your true self and the writer was trans and that book is about identity issues you know yeah and mm. eternity you know, girl is a phenomenal book i yes, love that book so it's good, so good. And you know what got me the most mad about these heroes though is that these two characters like these two specifically i think are supposed to be like gender fluid transgender or something like of course 
you made them like of course you did that and it's so insulting it, it feels forced yeah, it is. it's not it's natural insult- to like it's and, and i'm not saying that's bad or anything like by no all no 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 it's just yeah. it's insulting like I, I always say this like you know somebody got, got mad at me in one of my classes sometime you know big shock at sf state but like that I said, like, I can't stand how movies are like, oh, you know, diversity, 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 because they're not doing anything with these characters. There's like, mm-hmm. look at how diverse everything is. It's it's almost as insulting as back in old movies when they had like a token black character. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're not doing have, any. It's just to pander to people so you make money. Yeah, exactly. It's capitalizing. Like, I have friends that are gender fluid. I have friends that are trans and I have friends that are queer. You know, it's just like, I can only imagine if I showed them these characters they would probably scoff at them. Yeah. Because, you know, they've talked to me about that stuff. You know, like, we, I've hung out, like, random times, and, you know, you just talk about life. And, you know, just this whole idea of, like, how everything's being capitalized on, especially now with, you know, how everyone is supposed to be able to embrace who they are. But instead, the entertainment industry is just like, all right, now we're going to scoop this up and just, like, yeah. you know. Be like, yeah. see, we can make people that are just like you. Now buy our book for five ninety nine. Yeah, you know? and I'm also going to extend an olive branch here because uh, I'm, any of my conservative friends are going to get mad at me listening to this. So I'm going to extend an olive branch to you right now. When you focus your book so much on the whole woke culture thing and everything, not only you're probably going to piss off the woke culture, and the only people you're going to make happy are people who complain about everything, who probably don't even read comics, but you're also going to cut off half your market yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna read it you're gonna put are you gonna piss off yeah you're gonna piss off conservatives too like there's, I, I, you know, there's conservatives out there who are just like i love comics but why would i want to read something that tells me i'm i'm a horrible person all the time yeah. you know and then sho- and then shoving all this other stuff down it i mean why would you know you know what i want i want out of context panels from these books and i just want to see with no context what happens you want to when they come out you guys want to Okay, well, let's pull our money together so we spend as little money as possible on this. We'll- <laughs> Buy one issue, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to see how, to see how. Don't, it even, is. don't even read it. Just pull random images and just see what we get. Quotes, yeah, and- down. And you know what's well, the? You know what's going to be the real like the real like kick you when you're down is I guarantee you one of these books or maybe I shouldn't say guarantee you, but I feel like there's going to be at least one that's going to have someone who doesn't identify as anything like that writing it. Oh yeah, oh, or yeah. some because exactly for for that kind of thing you can't. I don't know. It, it it turns into a weird gray area because you know you have like old white men creating like diverse characters, but you can't really get away. And maybe I'm wrong, or maybe this is just what I've experienced. But you can't be like a cisgendered white man and try to write a story about being like gender fluid or even trans or anything like that. You know. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I personally, like, I try not to, I don't, I don't care what nationality or race or whatever the, the writer is, as long as you're a good writer. But I can see that where you really would have to, like, you have to be careful to understand what people what go through and everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I don't think a lot of writers are doing what, you know, like Grant Morrison, for example. Grant Morrison would dress the part and act the part of the character he was writing. I don't think a lot of these writers are doing that type of thing anymore. They're not getting in the heads of these characters. They're creating them, which is step one. And then they're just writing instead of like really embracing that character to be true to them and going out there and living that life. Yeah. And I feel like this is more of a problem at Marvel than it is at DC, but like, Mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of people are breaking in that just don't care about comics or superheroes. They're just doing it like, well, it's a job and it's writing. And you know, that's, I mean, that's the worst part. You do have people that are like getting into it when they realize that they do love it. Like, yeah, I mean, not to, I'm trying to like see some good in the industry because there is talent still, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. There is. Of course there is. Two hours, but I do. (laughs) Well, I mean, you you look at publications like heavy metal and then you look at a bunch of uprising, um, artists that like like what little bird that's a great graphic novel and that guy was a director before he did all this there's so many there's a lot of talent out there for sure there is yeah yeah i think you know we also love and appreciate the medium that's why we're so angry right like (laughs) exactly and you know i like i like i said like you know i feel like they've really they've alienated a lot of people from 
from their market, especially mainly Marvel. I don't DC is not as bad except outside of Gotham High, but Gotham High is like not even in the main continuity. Yeah, and it was like a side was book like, that was just for. I mean, you could tell it was for kids by the card, by the you know artwork and yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it was it was awful, but I mean, it's like it didn't bother me. Like, so there's so <laughs> yeah. many people that are making a big deal out of it. They're like, oh my god, it's the end of DC and everything. I'm like, who cares? It's not even continuity. Like, yeah, it's like it's meant for a different audience. And those yeah. that's the thing about DC is that they make books that are clearly for certain audiences. Exactly, they and I that's something that. I I'm just like that's fine, you know. And well, yeah, yeah. I'm not and then it, like <laughs> Marvel, like you know, you love Iron Man. Well, here's safe space in the Iron Man suit. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah. And how much you want to bet? How much you want to bet that like uh, the villain for that book is just going to be a stereotypical Trump supporter? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, both exist already, but I can totally see it yeah. happening. Yeah, and but not like, not like, not like you know, just a normal Republican who just happened to vote for Trump. I'm talking like straight up, like MAGA like hat this. wearing, like I voted yeah. to get rid of the Mexicans and everything. Like, just make it, just generalize an entire group of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't uh, be like, surprised. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I, I mean. Marvel's gone through more downs than ups in that sense. They've crashed more than yeah. almost anyone else. And they, it's they went bankrupt in the nineties. It all started there. Yeah. And you know what probably. saved them? Awesome comics in the ultimate universe. And that's what Pretty we need quick. again are awesome, good comics. And we just, you know, and yeah. that's why I love DC. Cause I'm, I'm hyped for metal coming out. I think doomsday clock was the biggest flop they've had, but it was, it was a halfway decent book, you know, cause the art was amazing. But, I, oh, Gary Frank is just yeah. He draws the best Superman right now. Oh yeah, I think. for sure. Yeah, him and, and who's the guy who's doing the main Superman series too? I always forget his name. Um, I think he's I a lo- like the what's his name? Something Javier Jimenez on Superman. Oh yeah, yeah it's him. He is. Yeah, awesome. Oh, he's on it right now. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. awesome. Yeah, because he draws a, he draws the Superman Rebirth costume with like the big 3ds and everything. Yeah. Like everything is just it's. Zack Snyder, what were you think? What were you guys thinking with that Man of Steel suit? Like, the, we I go on forever because like I despise what Zack Snyder did to my favorite superhero, Superman. I would like, love to do a Snyder episode with you guys. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, have you seen I, the Reddit co- like Reddit anything? The people, his fans are like cult like with with him, and it's weird. I know the people really, really, really dig that movie, Man of Steel. I love Henry Cavill too. Like I think oh, yeah. he was perfect to play Superman. It's like he I'm just gonna, wasted I'm though. This. I'm gonna say this though, just to go sidetrack real quick. I love that warehouse scene and Batman, Batman v Superman. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. No, no, that was okay. Ben Affleck, excellent. That was the only good thing oh. about that movie was Ben Affleck as Dude, Batman. I when I saw that, I was like, he needs like 15 Batman movies where he's just like tearing it up. Like, I know. Batman. I, he's finally like I was Michael Keaton's my favorite, but like finally we got a Batman that wasn't you know standing in the doorway. He is the doorway. Yeah, yeah. I was like yeah. that's I like yeah. I when I saw him standing I'm like that is Batman. That is yeah, huge dude, when, and everything. When he was like uh, like that first scene, yeah, where he is the doorway, like hiding in the corner and like. Just, oh uh, yeah, yeah, just hiding. Yeah, that's one of the coolest spots. Yeah. And that's why I can't stand Zack Snyder. They're like, he had a vision and everything. I'm like, you know, he was going to kill Batman off in the second Justice League movie. We should do a commentary on these movies. I'm, oh, I'm down. I already did a video. I did a video on my on my YouTube channel called Why It Was a Good Thing That Justice League Failed. <laughs> like, like, was, so I got a lot of hate on it on Reddit, but I also got some people who were just like, yeah, you're right. Because I was just like, if that movie didn't suck and bomb it like it did, they were just we wouldn't have gotten Joker or any of these other mo- or Aquaman or Shazam because they were just going to keep doing what they were doing. Yeah. Well, what else do you guys have on uh, oh, man. the industry? Okay, one more thing. They <laughs> we need Jim Shooter. We need Jim Shooter. Yes, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of the right, things. Like <laughs> right after he left Marvel because like they forced him out, mm-hmm. he Marvel crashed in the nineties. They went bankrupt. I, you know, I don't, I think Jim Shooter was great in his heyday, you know, in the, in the eighties, in the, maybe the early nineties or so, but I think he just became, I think it bent him so hard and he became so, 
his vision was lost and yeah. some of the stuff he said just hurt him so much. Like we need a man like Jim Shooter, but we need someone yeah. fresh with those ideas and we yeah. need someone John strict. Byrne? Do you think John Byrne would make a good editor in chief? I, don't, or... I think he's getting too old now. I think yeah. I don't think he'd be able it, to handle it. He, he think... wants to come back to do a Marvel story. I, I know that like they were, they were desperate to get him back to do a, an X-Men story. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I I'm okay with that. I'd do that. But uh, you know, he uh, has kind of like, John Byrne, if you're listening, like, I love you. You're my favorite, like, my favorite comic book artist, but he's kind of a jackass. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I think the industry is due for guidance from the veterans and just fresh meat all around. I'm not saying fire everybody or, like, get rid of the creative teams. I'm saying give new Fire people. half of them. Fire, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's get rid of half of them. Don't make... Don't make, you know, Tom King write four books and a TV show and don't make Jeff Lemire write for both publications and his independent stuff when he's trying to do that. Or Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. stop, stop calling Scott Snyder and saying, all right, we need a story arc. Time to get Metal Part 3, The Revenge going or something, you know? like yeah. have, a, have a plan. Like, I, th- I don't uh, know why they're still doing comics monthly. Like, I follow Todd Knock pretty, pretty closely and, like, the the amount of work that that guy is under and like it's Mm -hmm. he's a fast drawer too so could you imagine somebody like gary frank or something like that taking all that time to to draw that under that time constraint like they should have the books done months before the release yeah that's what i mean that's that's what killed doomsday clock for me and it's like you know have the first half of that series ready to go you know and then start being like hey this is going to come out so that when it comes out you're wrapping up the last few issues like you don't need to be drawing the issue a month before it's going to get released. Yeah, and you know, I, on the last episode of Brandon, I was telling him why like Jeff Lemire was so able to pump out so much material in like one month because he works independently and he is like he sees his schedule for the publications and he does it all at once or not all at once, but like he gets it done ahead of time. So yeah. when it comes out, he's already done. It's like. Not everybody has to follow that method, but there needs to be more structure and planning involved. Exactly. And, and you know, take notes from, like, the MCU movies. Because, like, the reason why they have such a good continuity and everything, except for Captain Marvel, which is oh, she's terrible in both the comics yeah. and the movies. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, they have they're, – they're planned ahead, like, 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you have to do. You don't do yeah. that. I know. I, I completely if, agree. If there. you don't do that – you have Star Wars, the current Star Wars oh, trilogy. God. Like, what happened with that? Like, yeah. well, that was a that's a whole another can of worms of a game of improv between J.J. Abrams and like <laughs> Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. Yeah. It's like so they, yes, brought, they, they brought they brought J.J. and they're like, here, fix Star Wars. He's like, okay. They're like, okay, now do it again. And he's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, can can, can yeah. you fix this other mistake we made? Yeah. So I mean, that's. that's like, that's a whole other thing. I don't want to get into it until we get to oh, that. Yeah, Star Wars is a whole nother episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think we came out of like, I think we came out of this podcast with like five new episodes. Yeah, no, I'm so down for that though. Yeah, uh, I am too. Like I I'm completely down I for agree. that. There's plenty of stuff I could rant and complain about. But um, yeah, I mean, we're geeks. We can complain about <laughs> anything and everything, and we will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be heard make- by our by the the 15 followers as of now yes <laughs> or whatever so you're about to is. hear me complain about everything guys um well i mean i think the whole point of this was just to kind of air our grievances right and kind of show concern mm-hmm. of where everything's at right now and yeah like i, oh, yeah. I the future is bright for independent publishers i i think that you know i don't see idw image or dark horse or any of the other ones going away anytime soon but yeah i mean just Marvel we, this, the industry dropped the ball. Reset. You know what I mean? We uh, needed yeah. this to happen because they had to look at their errors and they had to reanalyze yeah. themselves and everything too. So yeah. this, I don't, I don't think DC needs a reset, but Marvel I mean, you know, needed for a while. It's funny though because DC never like rebooted a lot compared to Marvel, who like never rebooted. Yeah. But yeah. DC did it over time. Marvel just did it over and over again in the span of a couple of years. Yeah, they had like, I mean. Five guardians. It was, wait, it was uh Marvel Now, Marvel Now, not in order. Marvel but, Now wasn't yeah. bad though. Ma- the first one or the second one? <laughs> the first Marvel. For, the first Marvel Now I liked. I was like, this is pretty good. I like the updated costumes and everything. I like where they're going. The, yeah. We got a uh, the 
Superior Spider-Man out of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Marvel now, Marvel now, all new, all different. And then uh, we got this new woke, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's still considered all new, all different. Guess, so they did two of two. Oh, all new, okay. all different. Wow. All new, all different. Oh my god! So yeah, hey. much, once once they went with all new, all different, I, that's where like, excuse me, I was like, it's done. Yeah, I mean, they lost me. When I go through their history, you have like Ultimate as well in a way. That was a whole new thing, like relaunching mm-hmm. way. Like, yeah, well, yeah, Ultimate like right. happened. Like they pretty much did their own like Crisis on Infinite Earths. I saw like they where they combined the Ultimate Universe in six one six. Yeah, well, that was Secret all from Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what gave all, gave us all new, all different. Yeah. Oh wow. But. I think overall the industry is struggling and it's going to continue to struggle because that's just how things go. And I think they're going to be the one in a weird way, the fans and the the publications are like the own worst enemies. They're going to be the nails in the coffin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, unfortunately the biggest, the biggest ones or the ones that are going to lose the most out of this is the comic shops. Yeah. That's who I feel the most bad for. So, no. are we basically doing a recap, or is that a... I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've gone over so much. Yeah, yeah I did. man, oh. we really... <laughs> that, I think, how, how long was that? That was... We're, I think we're going to hit hours? two hours right now. That's it? I thought we were doing this for like three. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it can keep going. I was just... Hey, we, <laughs> we could go forever. Yeah. I was Your just poor say, hard drive when you download that video. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're actually not doing bad right now. Oh, wait, yeah. Two and a half hours, yeah. Sorry, Frank, you're going to have to edit a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> I just said, let's just cap it off at three or three and right. a half. But uh, I was going to say, I think overall, they need to learn to respect what they're going for and not and have the right people doing it. I mean, I would love the idea of seeing new types of heroes of different, you know, ethnicities and i like the idea of you know someone being gender fluid writing a gender fluid character or you know someone who is like queer and identifies as queer and they want to create like their own superhero and you know bring that to the universe and contribute and i'd love to see stuff like that or more latin representation you know i think that's amazing it's just you know let the don't force it down our throats. Let the people that want to do it, do it. And, you know, they'll have something out there that everyone can relate to. And it'll have the heart that, you know, is needed to, you know, have people enjoy those. Well, also you have like the option of the else worlds that they haven't done in a while. They have a huge multiverse of stuff that they could dabble in and be like, Oh, this is from this earth. Yeah. They have what ifs. They have all sorts of ways to do it. Experiment. You know, see, let's say it's like, it's like taking a poll, you know, like put this out, see how it does as a one shot, as a three issue miniseries. If it works well, if you get a great response, start integrating it more and more slowly. And then, you know, maybe they can have their own book after time. You don't just like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to switch Batman out. And it's like, no, you need to keep yeah. Batman there, but you can have an Elseworld story where Batman's someone else. Yeah. And just... As a word of reference, any writers who are listening to this, just because it's an Elseworlds, Elseworlds story doesn't mean it has to be the worst scenario possible for that yeah. character. Mm-hmm. God, I'm so sick yeah. of those stories. I don't need like the Earth exploding and like Batman's son dying on the same day or something. Just, I don't know. Give just me an a, alternate a, take. Yeah. yeah. Put, like, yeah. To, to help the money in our wallets, you know, put you know a book on pause from Batman and have a different one come out or something. You know, mm-hmm. as for example. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. need like I'm okay with like it should just for Batman it should just be Batman Detective Comics or like and like Batman and Robin at or something Robin. like that or like Batman and the Family or whatever. Well, but even that's like course. pushing it. Honestly, they yeah. should have taken a break after Tom King. They should have yeah. just put the book to rest for a couple months and then either have Tom King finish what he was trying to do in that book. But I think by switching it over to James, it just didn't. I didn't it, like that. You know, it completely negates everything that Tom King was working towards. It's like, all right, business is back as usual. Yeah. And I just, yeah. I couldn't get how they're handling it now. Like distributing. You know what they <laughs> yeah. could have done? The, you know what they should have done with like action comics when it hit a thousand, that should have been the final issue. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. And then you just did a giant issue. Just, we could yeah, do just a like, month. That's it for action comics. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. It'd be Same okay. thing for Batman. You could you could take a few months, honestly. Give it a nice break. Let the let the steam build up a little. You know, let let people get excited and then show us the new stuff. Yeah, I remember we were joking in class talking about how like Jim Lee gave himself the job of drawing the Action Comics one thousand uh, cover. God, yeah. of course, and Detective. How do you and guys think? What do you guys think of his art? Do you think it's overrated or? <laughs> I, I'm gonna go there. I think it's overrated. I don't enjoy what he does. Okay, uh, I'm not I'm, hating on him or his talents. I don't like his art personally, but you know, there's a few people I'm that way. Yeah, Jim yeah, Lee's art some... is like it's great, but I think it's risen the standard so high that it's it makes people like not appreciate any other type of art in comic books. They want yeah. that perfectionist artwork, and that's not what it's about. It's never what it's yeah. been about, you know. And it's yeah. like you're trying to make every comic book into a Superman when. Superman's unique, you know, in that sense. It's supposed to be unique. You're supposed to have a couple yeah. rip-offs like Supreme and stuff like that. But, you know, everyone wants that perfection artwork. And it discourages, you know, upcoming artists too. And it's yeah. hard to find other people. It's hard for other people to find their voice and their style when you're trying to mimic Jim Lee. That's why yeah. I always felt that, like, uh, Todd Nock doesn't ever get enough credit. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. 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 He's a great artist. I, I think he's a great guy too. And you know, he never gets, I never thought he gets enough credit for his artwork. You know, I, I think. Favorite, or, no, go ahead. No, what were you going to say, Brandon? I was going to say, yeah, no, I get it. Uh, one of my favorite artists is Mike Del Mundo. And yeah. that guy never gets credit for anything. And he draws some of the greatest stuff I've ever seen. Yeah. Bob McLeod's another one that just never gets the credit he deserves. And he's one of the greats, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's so many, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, well guys this has been an interesting talk <laughs> this has been this has been awesome guys. so are, are we doing the i'm down to do this weekly guys <laughs> yeah if you yeah. guys want to do some more crossovers we could figure out some stuff yeah uh, we just gotta figure out scheduling wise you know because yeah. you know of course it takes time i think these big bombastic episodes yeah we should plan them out and do something i mean i'm glad we tackled this topic this was a yeah. big a lot to, we had a lot to speak about and there's a lot going on that we needed to address and i'm glad we you know get to share ideas and opinions in that sense too you know what um may the 4th is coming up <laughs> star wars episode oh. guys oh, star wars episode? That. Yeah, i got oh, one, one of my buddies is like the ultimate star wars fanboy who he loves last jedi like he loves anything star wars Hey, that's me right here. Actually, no, I legitimately think Phantom Menace and Episode 2 are awful, but for the memes... Mm. Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> one of those guys, he's just like, he, I'll admit, like he doesn't think Attack of the Clones is a good movie, but he still loves it because it's Star Wars. I, I'm like that, but I can't sit here and only watch that. You know? Yeah. And I don't know. I love Star Wars as a whole because, you know, it is my favorite film series, but I don't get super religious about it until certain things happen. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a thought. We could bring out. We could have like a a four four person Star Wars like shootout. Yeah. I'd be down. We'll we'll narrow it down a bit and we'll get some ideas on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll just uh, bounce it back. But this was good. I think it was <laughs> nice to. You guys down to review the whole all the trilogies? <laughs> <laughs> we go piece by piece. I'm down. Uh, yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but uh, no, I. Yeah, I think uh, it'd be good to do that because that's a whole other fandom, of course, right? Yeah, we we gotta expand. Because uh, my thing, my thing is that I love Star Wars. You know, we all love Star Wars as a whole. I think it's so safe to say, like the property. Mm-hmm. And you know, people get very divisive on the films, and I think that's worth like looking into. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna bring this all back around to Marvel, though, guys. Like, watch me do this. Watch me bring this back to Marvel, or or, or back to comics. The Marvel Star Wars comics are actually pretty good. They are, and they are yeah. underappreciated, honestly. Yes, they are. They yes. actually are handling that front of the comics pretty well. Yeah. Okay. I've heard some really good with Charles Soule, and what his ideas I've heard are just like, all right, you, you, you do get what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Really good artists, like yes, really Charles good writing. Soul, Darth Vader is awesome. Yeah. And I've, I've been following it all because I'm one of those people that, like, you know, Star Wars comics are very intimidating to get into, and I was like, I'm going to tackle it and see what happens. Yeah, and they're good. I just, I'm just, i such a fan of that Dark Horse stuff, and I've been so disappointed with Marvel yeah. across the board. That's why I haven't touched it too much. I, yeah. I do miss the old EU. 
Oh yeah. But it got, it, it just got too big. Yeah. Too many cooks in that kitchen. A hundred percent. Yeah. But, uh, I do miss, I do miss some of the old dark horse, like the rogue squadron series and all that. Those were good comics. Yeah. Well, there goes another one yep. down. Yeah. Well guys, um, this can be up on all of our channels and we'll distribute it like crazy. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Like, Thanks for coming on to the show. Let's let's keep this going on some crossovers. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I, I'm glad that everyone was able to agree to it too. Honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Our timing worked out, and if the longer we're in quarantine, uh, the better it is for us. <laughs> I guess yeah. so. Yeah, might as well make use of it. Oh, uh, we're gonna make uh, so many people angry with that statement. Like, <laughs> you like being in quarantine with all these people? <laughs> Wait, are we still recording? Are we done? Uh, yeah. Let me. All right. Right, oh yeah okay, hanging, okay. Guys. yeah thanks guys thanks for watching <laughs> thanks, appreciate right. it right, right. yeah throw a like and subscribe yes please. Support the <laughs> <homies>. <laughs> oh, man.